And this 50,000-seat facility has been sold out since early this summer to see Hawaii's Rainbow Warriors face the Rose Bowl-bound Wolverines of the University of Michigan. It's December in Michigan, and nature is at rest on the campus at Ann Arbor. But sometimes when nature sleeps, the mind dreams of things far, far away. nature can't provide during a Michigan December, maybe your friendly travel agent can. Now, Hawaii's a long way off, but isn't a trip to paradise really worth it? And what do you do for the hours that can seem endless? Well, any number of things, if you have your homework done, that is. Who came up with the best idea? It was Bo. Gerald White proves there's more than one way to be a winner. Finally, the journey of almost 5,000 miles is over, and Jim Harbaugh was the first to receive the traditional Hawaiian greeting. The Wolverines had invaded Honolulu. Welcome to Paradise, Honolulu, Hawaii, and the island of Oahu, which is nestled in the middle of the beautiful Sandwich Islands in Honolulu. And yes, there's a lot that can be done here as parasailing and sailing takes place here in the South Pacific. And Aloha from Aloha Stadium. And the Heisman voting is the big story in college football today. Benny Testaverde, the winner running away. Palmer, Harbaugh, Bosworth, and Luckbaum were in the finalist category. And this afternoon here in Honolulu, we feature the third place finisher, and that, of course, is Jim Harbaugh. Hello, everyone. This is Tim Brando. And how often do you see a Michigan quarterback wind up in the finalist category for the Heisman? Well, Jim Harbaugh accomplished that feat. Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally will call today's game. And Mike and Pat, Jim Harbaugh has one more big game before the Rose Bowl, and we've got it. It's the last game in the CFA season this year. Tim, you're right, and it's a beautiful day in Honolulu. The only problem for the University of Michigan with the great athletes in the championship season is coming to Honolulu, and I dare you to concentrate on football here. Well, you could be right, Mike. Uh, I'm sure that bikinis and blankets aren't big sellers in Michigan right now during this time of the year. However, if any coach in the country can make his team ready for a game like this, it's got to be Bo Schimbeckler. And I played for Bo in the 1974 East-West Shrine game, and this guy made his practice on Christmas. The West team, they had the day off. They met with their families, opened gifts. We had to go through a full workout, full practice. You know, I talked to him yesterday, and he still claims that's why we won that game. I'm sure he'll figure out how to turn this from a vacation into a work experience. You know, the Hawaii people are very proud this week because they have their first, first team All-American, and that's defensive tackle Al Noga. Oh, this guy is a great player. And I've watched him the last couple days on films. He's very quick, great penetration. He has 46 tackles behind the line of scrimmage. I'm sure Michigan has never seen a defensive tackle this quick, and he's going to cause some problems. I think one of the keys to the game today may be the performance of Hawaii quarterback Greg Tipton. Well, Tipton, no question he can throw the ball. He's thrown for 4,500 yards the last two seasons. The problem is interceptions, 30 in his career, 18 this year alone. And what he does is he forces the ball into coverages a lot, and he can't do that against Michigan. Michigan will sit back in their zones. He's got to take the short throws. If he starts bombing away, they're in big trouble. We've got fourth-ranked Michigan against the University of Hawaii, a team that is trying to pull off the biggest win in the history of its program. All coming up for you on ESPN. 
live CFA football. Oh, Schembechler, you got to be not only... So our ball game back to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. The Michigan Wolverines ranked fourth in the nation. And the Hawaii Rainbows, a team that has certainly proven that they can play with the big boys over the past few years, preparing to get together for the final regular season game of the college football season yet to be played. All that remains now are bowl games. And for the Wolverines of Michigan, that means the Rose Bowl. One thing about Bo Schembechler, his clubs have never lost in this stadium. They won the Holiday Bowl here, the Aloha Bowl as well. And here come the Rainbows of Hawaii. And the Michigan Wolverines are making their way onto the field as well. And they are led by their leader, the Heisman Trophy candidate, Jim Harbaugh. Michigan and Hawaii, they're next on ESPN. Here are the weather conditions for today's game. At the bottom of your screen, you notice it's a beautiful 71 degrees in Honolulu. We may have some showers. Look at it in Ann Arbor, 35 degrees. The wind chill is 20. So if you're watching from Ann Arbor, Michigan, throw another log on the file, on the fire, get out some eggnog, sit back and relax as the Wolverines go against the Rainbows of Hawaii in the final regular season game of the year. And Pat. For all these people in Hawaii, there's a great deal of emotion, not only this week with Al Noga making a first-team All-American, but with the Rainbows facing what could be the biggest win in their history. It really is. The emotion's all on their side. Besides being a home game, you have to know emotionally, Michigan's got to be down. They beat Ohio State in the game of the year for them. They'll be playing the Rose Bowl later on. This will be a tough game for them to get, re get ready mentally. And there's a the man right there that's got to do it. Bo Schimbeckler's got to supply the fire today. In his 24th year, of coaching, 18th at Michigan. He's won more games than any other active coach. And Dick Tomey on the on the Hawaii sideline, who, as you see, served as, as an assistant to Bo at Miami of Ohio, and has been in Hawaii in 10 years and done a nice job in developing this program. The man to kick off is Pat Moons out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And a three-deep alignment, the man in the middle is number one, Colleen Walsh, averaging 23 yards, a kick return. And we're set to go from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. And it's Walsh, two yards deep, and Defensa says down it there. So Hawaii will start from its own 20-yard line, first and 10. This is senior quarterback Greg Tipton, who has 11 touchdowns, almost 2,500 yards passing this year, but he also has 18 interceptions. The most dangerous offensive players for the Rainbows, Dias and Johnson, who are the wideouts and very good receivers. And the offensive line has undergone some changes because of injuries. They'll have a real test today. We'll set the Michigan defense for you in just a moment. Tipton, who has had an up and down career, needs to be up today. He has been cheered and booed in his two years in Honolulu. The running backs behind him, for better 21, and Crowell 22. And Tipton wants to throw on first down, he'll run it. And gets to the 24-yard line, brought down by McIntyre and Moeller in there. For Michigan on defense up front, they're led by Messner and Heron. Heron, a big play man from the right side. And linebacker Moeller and McIntyre lead the team in tackles. And Garland Rivers is the best man in the secondary. He's tough against the run and a big hitter. Gate of four on the last play. There's a good look at Tipton. I think there was illegal motion on that play. And it'll cost them five yards. So instead of a gain of four, it's a loss of five. And here's the call. We have an illegal shift on the offense. First down. So it's first and 15 for Hawaii. And here's where they've had problems all year long, Pat, is being in an obvious passing situation. Well, they're not a very strong running team. They need to pick their places when they throw the passes, and they do not want these long situations. Here's the delay. They'll give it off to Crowell. And Crowell up to about the 27-yard line. Danny Crowell. The junior, a former walk-on, brought down by the strong safety, Ivan Hicks. Try to cross him up early, Pat. 
Well, they throw the ball a lot out of the backfield to him. Again, the key to this game for the quarterback, Greg Tipton, is to take the short passes. In that case, nice call by the coaches, a draw. They spread out the Michigan defense, had a nice gainer there. He has to be patient. Greg Tipton is the key to this offense. Crowell has had two games this year over 100 yards. And it is pronounced Crowell instead of Crowell. Tipton on the roll and wants to screen back to the other side to Johnson. Avoids one tackle and dives across the 30-yard line to the 32. Garland Rivers knocked his legs out from under him, and it's a first down for Hawaii. Well, a couple good ways to beat this powerful pass rush and penetration in Michigan defense. Screens and draws. Here they use the screen very nicely. He rolls right and throws it back. In fact, if he had a better block here, it would have been a big gainer. One-on-one -on -one block. Missed right there by Panoski, but he still picked up the first down. Ball spotted just shy of the 32-yard line. Good look at Johnson. A lot of California players on this club. Teeter is in at middle guard right now for Michigan, number 83. And they'll go straight up the middle after him. And they'll get a couple of yards and no more. Messner with a horse collar tackle and drives Crowell back into the ground. Messner, the leader on this team, in tackles behind the line of scrimmage. He's a tough player. Michigan always seems to have a couple of very, very tough down line. Well, they do, and they always have the linebackers behind them. If they can get big plays out of Messner, that'll open it up for Moeller and McIntyre, the middle backers who are their leading tacklers. You need those big three guys in the front. Junior Lapati, number 48, is in as a running back for Hawaii. He's in there with Crowell, 22, split behind Tipton. Here comes a blitz, and Tipton has plenty of time and throws complete, and then it's fumble. Fumble in midfield, and Michigan is recovered. Tony Gant got the fumble. Hawaii was on the move, but the big hit was by Ivan Hicks, who shook it loose. We're going to the game. Dick Tomey, the coach for Hawaii, thought one place they could attack this Michigan defense are the crossing routes. Not up top, because they drop too deep. Their safeties. They have a tight end clearing underneath here. Now he'll go right over. He hung this ball up. It's a nice catch, but he gets popped right here and gives it up. That is a catch now. Ooh, back, no chance on that. You can't blame the receiver. It's awfully difficult to hold on to that ball, and it's just a turnover. Hawaii has to avoid the turnovers. It was a great grab by Dias, and you can hardly blame him for coughing that one up. Morris and Perriman behind Jim Harbaugh. And Morris will try the right side. Inside the 45 to about the 44-yard line. On top of him, Everett Wade, 55, and Brian Owens came up. That's Jim Harbaugh, who is an exceptional quarterback. He has led the Wolverines to a 10-1 record this year, more than 2,400 yards passing. The best of the skill people for Michigan, Jamie Morris, after his second straight 1,000-yard season. The line is very good, and it is huge. Only one starter under 285 pounds. Higgins checks into the wide receiver for Paul Jokic. Higgins is 31. And it's second and six for the Wolverines. McMurtry, the man in motion. And they'll go up the middle of Pyramid. And Pyramid knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Thad Jefferson, not expected to start, but he's in there right now. And Jefferson, the third leading tackler in Hawaii history. A defensive front has their first team All-American defensive tackle, Al Noga. He is a great one. Thad Jefferson, as we said, the number three tackler in Rainbow history. He's been playing hurt. Kyle Kofensis is the interception leader in the secondary with four. The other starters only have two between them. Michigan goes with two tight ends, Brown and Walker, 80 and 89. They're in there on third and two. And they've got the first down to the 35-yard line as Perriman takes it. Now, Al Noga, normally 54, is wearing 44. That's because his older brother, Pete Noga, who was an outside linebacker, has been injured and has a lot of wrapping around one leg, won't be able to play today, so he is wearing his number. There's a good look at Al Noga as a junior, a first-team All-American, and you have to live in Hawaii to understand how difficult that is. They get no press over here, especially from the east and the Midwest. And it's a great job for him. Perriman, first man through, gets to the 30-yard line up from the secondary is Owens to put the shoulder into him. Mike, you notice they're running to the right side at Michigan. They're going to go at Al Noga right now. 
which is interesting. They're going at the strength, but they're so big on the right side of that line. Noga's going to go inside. That's what he does. He tries to penetrate. They double team him. He takes himself out of the play, but that's the kind of style he has. He's going to jump around the blockers. He's going to try to get in the backfield and make the big plays. He had 600 pounds of blockers on him then. Hammerstein and Elliott. They're in the wishbone. Webb number 46 joins Perriman and Morris. Harbaugh to throw. McMurtry is open and driven out of bounds over there by Kyle Kefensis. Harbaugh right on target with his first throw. That's a nice throw by Harbaugh. Al Noga almost got the sack here. You'll see him hit him just after he releases it. Greg McMurtry is going to be a big player for Michigan. He's only a freshman. Bowes very, very high on him as a receiver. And here comes Noga. Watch again. Penetration. Fake outside. Come inside. He's just so quick. They tried to double team him. They tackle him. He still almost made the sack. You want to know how good he is. 17 sacks this year. 29 tackles in the backfield. So first and 10 here for Michigan at the Hawaii 15-yard line. Harriman gets to the 10. Holding onto his ankles, Matt Fulmer, 56. Shim Beckler at the sideline. Yeah, we were talking, I was going to mention earlier, why they're running at Al Noga, even though he's such a great player. You look at their line, their offensive line. Vitaly, the center, 289. Hammerstein, the right guard, 285 pounds. And John Elliott, number 72, the right tackle, 6'7", 306 pounds. Where would you run? Sellout crowd here. It's been sold out since June. 50,000 seat Aloha Stadium overlooking Pearl Harbor. Beautiful facility. Second and five. The only wide receiver out to the right is Jokic. He comes in motion. Morris can't get past the line of scrimmage. Coming apart from the secondary, Patrick McRae, number nine. Also good support from Brian Norwood, 26. Hawaii's well, defense, Pat, excuse me, has been super all year long. Their offense has gotten them in a lot of trouble. Well, it is. Uh, we talked about the importance of Tipton having a good game, their quarterback, but really, the other major factor in this game is whether or not they can take Michigan out of their automatic drive, just their right. running game. They can't do it. They can't win. Higgins and McMurtry in a wide receiver on third and five from the Hawaii 10. Opening possession, and Harbaugh's back to throw under pressure, and they got it. Scott's from Sydney, Australia, gets the sack and saves the possible touchdown. Well, this Hawaii defense has come up with big plays all year long. They're going to gamble a lot. They're going to blitz. And in this case, they gave Harbaugh no chance to get rid of this ball. And Scott's hadn't even played football three or four years ago. He came from Australia. He's going to get this sack. Big, strong kid. Probably make it in the pros next year. Mike Gillette is on to attempt a 40-yard field goal. He is 9 out of 14 this year. He's got the distance, and it's good. Mike Gillette, who has been the number one kicker since the Iowa game for Michigan, puts the Wolverines on top 3 to nothing, with 8.40 to go. First quarter from Honolulu. If you've never been to Hawaii, you ought to try it. And there's a nice welcome. Andy, please send money. You can use it over here, can't you, Pat? Oh, it's easy to spend it. Boy, the shrimp isn't cheap, but it's tasty. It must be Wolverine time. you got to be a fan to buy a hat with a working clock in it, you know? What, they have five or 6,000 fans come all the way really from Michigan to this game. Unbelievable support. Of course, it's not a bad location. No, it's not. It's not a bad time to leave Ann Arbor. You know, a little uh, Christmas trip to get a tan. Michigan leading 3-0. They'll kick it away. And Hawaii will get a chance to move on its second offensive possession. They moved the ball well on their first one, but coughed it up on a fumble at midfield. And Michigan drove, got the field goal after reaching the 10-yard line, and then being sacked out of touchdown territory. Moves to kick it away. Thought we were going to have some showers, and did earlier, but it has cleared up in a beautiful afternoon in Honolulu. High short kick this time, and Walsh from the eight. Team up the middle and Colby Walsh back to the 34-yard line for the Rainbow Warriors. David Arnold down on kick coverage for Michigan made the tackle. 26-yard return. That scoring drive only went 25 yards after the turnover, and Gillette capped it off with a 40-yard field goal. 
Tipton will bring them out on the first series. He was two for two and had 21 yards. David Arnold, who made the uh, tackle on that kickoff, will remain in the ball game at left corner for Michigan. Tipton wants to throw the quick out. He's got the completion, not for much, though, as Dias is wrapped up in a hurry by Dieter Heron, the right outside linebacker. Give him a gain of only two on that last play. The backs, Crowell and Lapati. And now Permetter comes in, the starter, and Lapati will go out. Permetter's only gained 166 yards on the ground this year, but he had one game over 100. Second and eight. He's the deep man in the eye, and he's got the football. Wrapped it up and went across the 35, go about the 37 yard line. Steve Thiebert flattened it from the side. Permetter 5'11", 192 pounds. One thing about Hawaii's team, nobody's name is easily pronounced. Boy, this is I'll the toughest, that. toughest group we've ever faced. Now that uh, BYU last week, they had a few Hawaiians, but this team is to stock with them. Lapati 48 will check back into the ball game. Permetter will come out. It's a third and seven situation for the Rainbows. Facing a five-man Michigan front and a three-man rush. Tipton with plenty of time, throws complete again. This time he hit his tight end, Ron Hall. Mallory brought him down, but Tipton has been on target with everything he's thrown. Boy, Hall took a shot and hung on. Well, I think the Michigan secondary shows how they tattoo people. They make you pay for it when you catch it. But Ron Hall is an excellent receiver, is a tight end, he's a good blocker. There, he holds on to the ball. Boy, that was a big hit. That could have been another turnover. And again, although Michigan does play a lot of conservative zones, when their secondary comes up, they close the gap and they put some serious leather on the receivers. Make you pay for it. Tipton has been perfect so far. Four for four and has his team near midfield. For better. Into Michigan territory, gets to the 46-yard line. Andy Moeller, all big 10, the number one tackler on the ball club, brought him down. Hawaii's coach, Dick Tomey, is very high on Ron Hall. He thinks he's got a pro future, not just as a receiver. Watch him block right here. One-on-one. -on -one. Just keeps him out of the play. That's his job on that play. Good tight ends finisher blocks. You notice how he continued hitting him, continued hitting him. Doesn't allow the pursuit to make the tackle from the backside. Gaskell, 88, the wide receiver to the top of your screen. Holding Walsh is in the slot on second and five. Fake and Tipton under pressure this time and tripped as he got past the 50 to about the 49-yard line, and Billy Harris, number 56, was in there along with Andre McIntyre, 54, for that Michigan defense. Tipton showing good patience on that. He had no receiver open. Better to pull it down instead of an interception. And we've got a Hawaii injury. And we'll let you know as soon as we uh, confirm the number. And it's Kurt Schleier. Backup wide receiver who is down. No, it's 61, excuse me. Rich Panoski, who was starting at left guard because Charlie Moatuli, or Charlie Moatatuli, excuse me, had a broken ankle and was out. And Higgins, the third string left guard, is now going to have to come into the ball game. And Hawaii's offensive line pad has been beaten up. Well, they've had a lot of injuries and a lot of youth. You know, their right tackle, number 75, Mark Nua, it's interesting, last year he had never practiced or played in a football game. September 1st he came out for the team and he started at offensive tackle on September 28th. Four weeks of preparation. That was last year, he's a lot better, he's huge, he's over 300 pounds. That's the problem with that O-line, a lot of inexperience, a lot of injuries. Yeah, but he's 6'7", 329, who's going to tell him he's not going to play? Uh, he can block a lot of air at that size. Third and eight. Michigan showing blitz and here they come. They picked up Moeller and Tipton fell. A great block by Lopati picking up the blitz of Andy Moeller. Moeller a 222, Lopati a 196, really drilled him as he came through. And Moeller is an excellent blitzer. You're right in the middle of your screen, number 49, coming in. Now watch this pickup by the back. That's a halfback. Excellent block, takes him on, and Tipton just falls down. Can't do it any better as an offensive back. Tipton was getting back as quickly as he could. He saw the pressure coming. Kyle Alou is back to punt, and Gant standing at his 20. Put a little pressure, he got it out, end over end. 
again, takes it at the 22. With a stutter step and crosses the 25 to about the 27-yard line. And the Wolverines will start from there. A 35-yard kick, a five-yard return. And we've got a timeout with 5.04 to go first quarter. Back in a moment. Second and seven for the Wolverines. Ten and one this year. Our ball with a play on Deep sideline, great diving try over there by Higgins, but he couldn't hold it. Closest man to him was Patrick McRae for Hawaii, but Harbaugh was just a little bit off target. Well, this ball definitely was out of bounds. He wouldn't have pulled this in even had he held on to it. But this is a Michigan team. They've thrown for more yards than they've run for this year. Very uncharacteristic. Oh, they, uh, they might have snuck that foot in there, but... It, Pretty tough catch. Great effort. Couldn't hold it. McMurtry now back in at a wide receiver. Yokish comes out. And it's third and seventh. Hawaii trying to stop Michigan on their second possession. Draw play. Morris. They won't get the first down. They stack him up just across the 30-yard line. And the crowd really comes up. It was number 34, John Levingston. Put a shoulder pad in there. And Hawaii is held. you got to like this rainbow defense. Well, coming in, they wanted to stop that running game. They did it that drive. They want to force Harbaugh to throw the ball because they can tackle him when they're on the ground. No question about it. That's Briggs, number four. He is standing deep to receive the punt of 43, Monty Robbins, who is averaging 44.1 yards a kick on the season. He's only had to punt the ball 29 times in 11 games. Pressure. They almost got there, and he got a beauty out. And they've got to let it bounce, and that'll get about another 10 yards on the roll inside the 25-yard line. So Robbins uncorks a 42-yard kick, including the roll. We've got a timeout in the first quarter still. 3-0 Michigan. Minutes, 33 seconds to go. First period of play from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. Mike Patrick, Pat McAnally, and Tim Brando, we are delighted to be here, and we're glad to have you with us as Michigan and Hawaii are going to war here. And Hawaii will have the football first and 10 at its own 25. It's a beautiful lay the lady has around her neck. We received uh, some gorgeous red lays from the state of Hawaii before the game. I want to thank them for that and for their hospitality here this week. Michigan looks like they jump off sides, and Tipton did a nice job. He just touched the center before the snap count was supposed to come. The center snapped the ball, and Tipton wanted to see what he could get out of it. Billy Harris was the man who jumped off sides, the nose guard. That's a smart play by Tipton, Pat. Well, they, they, I know they noticed Billy Harris. Let's hear the call here. Billy Harris does guess, and a lot of times he'll fake to the right, and then he'll cut back to the left. So they think they can quarterback sneak on on occasion. In this case, he was offsides. He just took the ball and tried to sneak in a big game. Right there, right in the left side screen. No question, he was offsides. He does try to jump a lot because he gambles. He goes right and left. You can beat him. The other reason that's a good play, if he gets back, it's not offsides if there's no contract. No contact, right? Coachman against the defense. First down. Three seconds, please, on the clock. So if the quarterback sees him in that neutral zone and snaps the ball, he's automatically offsides. It's a great play. Plus, if he breaks it for more than five yards, they could take it That's and right. turn down the penalty. First and five. Move the ball out to the 30-yard line. And they're adjusting the clock right now, trying to take uh, time off of it. It should be down to 333. And they'll stop it at 333, and it will be still first and five for the Rainbows. straight up the middle. Tough running by Crowell. Dragging people with a molar finally made the tackle along with Gant. Crowell, 198 pounds, only 5'8". He's had 675 yards rushing this year, the leading ground gainer for the Rainbows. And time winding down here in the first period with Michigan leading only three to nothing. Bo Schembechler, a lot of people thought he was blowing smoke. He was smoke. He expected this to be a good ball game and a close one. Tipton, who has been perfect facing a long yardage situation, and still on his feet is Coyle Permetter. 
And Permitter just pounding out there. Rivers and Gant had to come up from the secondary to make the stop. And it'll be a first down for the Rainbows. Well, Hawaii thinks they can run against Michigan, but the only plays they think work are quick hitters, dives. They don't want to go laterally against them. They're too big and strong, and this is what it does. He breaks one tackle right there. Nua, that huge tackle got in the way. He cut off him, made the first down. Hey, when you got a guy 320 pounds, number 75, Mark Nua at your right tackle, I'd hide behind him, too. You betcha. First and 10, Hawaii from their 43. Hall comes back in as the tight end. And Walsh goes out to the near side as a wide receiver. Tipton under pressure. He'll have to take the sack, and it was Mark Messner. His sixth sack of the season. He leads the team in that department. Dieter Heron also applying the pressure that forced quarterback Greg Tipton up inside to begin with. At least Tipton is not throwing it up for grabs, and that was the wrap on it. Well, he's thrown the ball perfectly today. He's, he's taken the throws when he's had them. They had an unfortunate turnover earlier after a catch, a fumble. But he's doing his job. He's not making mistakes, and he's throwing the ball on target when he has to. Lost nine on that one, and it's second and 19 for Hawaii. Here's the draw to Paul. He'll get some of the yardage back across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Moeller and Heron on the ground for Michigan to make the tackle on Permetter. Now, talking to Bo yesterday, you know, he, he was not happy about having this game. You know, Hawaii is a very physical team. You're right, Mike, and they match up well with Michigan. They're very strong. They're very physical. And if they avoid the errors on offense, I do think it'll be a close game. Permetter comes out of the ball game. Lapati, 48, is back in. And Jim Beckler just has one of the most enviable coaching records of all time. Third and 13. Obvious passing down for Tipton. This has been the problem. He fakes the draw. Under pressure. He was hit just as he unloaded that, but he's got five. concentration by David Dias, number 43 on that catch. You're right, Tipton's going to be hit right when he delivers this ball, and it just floated. It seemed like it was up in the air forever. I'd like to have had that kind of hang time on some of my punts. So this ball is just going to hang and hang and hang and flutter. And Dias is going to get inside Rivers. Rivers slips, number 13, right in the middle of your screen. That was his responsibility. And now watch the concentration. He knew he was going to pay the price, and he did, but he held on. Dias nice is second all-time receiving in yardage for Hawaii, and Greg Tipton has just set a single-season yardage record. He owns most of the other records for the Rainbows in the passing department, even though this is only his second year here, coming as a junior college transfer. Well, that little bit of rain before the game, I think that caused Garland Rivers to fall down, Mike. Ball up to 34. They'll give it off to Crowell. And Crowell wrapped up as he gained maybe a yard, no more. Andy Moeller right there to make the stop. And McIntyre, both inside linebackers and on the tackle. This can be the toughest surface to play on for a receiver, a running back, or defensive back and linebacker because the field isn't soaked, so you're not being careful with your steps. But it's very slippery because it's just a fine line of water on it. I think we'll see a lot of fall downs today. Going to be second and nine for Hawaii. This is their best penetration. And they have moved the ball in the first quarter against Michigan with 30 seconds to go in the period. Vegas in motion. Tipton under pressure from behind. Doesn't see it. Guns incomplete. What a throw to Cole Dean Walsh. Walsh knocked down by Hicks. But Tipton is having the game of his life. Tipton is on fire, no question. I saw him against Wisconsin earlier this year. He pulled out a victory in the last quarter. This kid can throw the ball. Good protection that got him out of the pocket. Steps forward, gets nailed. He's already delivered the ball, though. Oh. Nice catch right here. And his receivers are pulling these down. They're a little high, but he's going to take it, and he knows he's going to get hit. Nice catch. And Hawaii has the ball at the Michigan 17. First and 10. chance nice play by Rivers who came up from the corner closed in a hurry and flattened him before he could get back to the line of scrimmage that is the end of the first quarter in Aloha Stadium in Honolulu it's three nothing Michigan Tipton misses his first pass of the afternoon he had been six out of six for 78 yards
Offsides, Michigan is the call. So he's still perfect. And Hawaii will pick up five yards on the penalty. Tipton thought he had a touchdown there for a second. Here's the penalty call. We have offside on the defense, second down. Nice play calling. First down, they're going to go with the play action. Hall, the tight ends. Nice receiver. Here we go. He's going to go to the post. Quarterback's rolling left. He sees him. It looks like it's a sure touchdown here, but he delivers it a step late. Right there. Just a little late. Had he got that ball into that zone quicker, it would have been a touchdown. Second and six, Hawaii. Permitter gets very close to the 10. Gant was in on the stop, along with Moeller. Moeller always seems to be the, on the bottom of that pile. Take a look at the first quarter statistics, and you're going to see that Hawaii racked up 100 yards in total offense. Michigan giving up only 293 yards a game against some great teams. And Hawaii just dominated the first quarter. They've been able to run the ball a little bit and set up that passing game. That's exactly what they need to do. They need Tipton to keep throwing the ball exactly as he has. Big play here, third and three. Permitter, the deep man in the eye. Crowell will get it instead. And Crowell hit immediately by Billy Harris, the middle guard. May have gotten a yard out of it, but it's going to bring up fourth. And a long yard, maybe a yard and a half, and we'll see what Nick Tomey decides to do. And here comes the field goal unit. Can't blame him for this. Some of the fans don't like it. But to tie up Michigan second quarter, you got to go for the field goal, I would think. Oh, definitely, particularly after uh, that. That was a gamble of a call on third down there. Third and three. I'm surprised to see him put it on the ground. Billy Harris just guessed, went to the right, and stopped that play dead. I think he's got to go for the field goal. You're right. This is Ron Valverde, who will try from 26. He's hit 12 out of 19 this year. A chance to to tie it up in the second quarter. And he's got it. Valverde comes through, and Hawaii has come from behind to tie Michigan in three. 13 minutes, 30 seconds to go in the first half from Honolulu. We're tied at three between Michigan and Hawaii. 13.30 to go. First half of play, Hawaii kicking off. Little squib kick, trying to keep it away from Morris. Taken by one of the up men at the 30, and they'll only get back to the 31-yard line. It was taken by Thomas Wilcher, number 27, and he was buried right after he got it. Hawaii is coming off a very impressive scoring drive that took more than five minutes and went 66 yards. They had to settle for the field goal. Valverde came through for officially from 25 yards out. The interesting thing in the first quarter, Michigan only had 30 yards in total offense. And this is a Michigan offense averaging 434 yards a game. They can really rack up the yards and the points, and the Hawaii defense has shut them down. Well, I think they're going to force them to put the ball up, and uh, that's exactly what they want to do, stop Michigan running game. Don't let them get into automatic drive where they just pound people into the ground. Make them throw it and rely on their secondary and their pressure on the quarterback. Harbaugh has Perriman 37 and Morris 23 behind him. And first and 10 from the 31. And he'll throw in first down. In trouble. Got out of it and hustling toward the sideline. Got to about the 38-yard line. Chasing him was Everett Wade. And the flag is going to go down for a late hit. And it looked like Belcher 63 was the man who got in there late, and it will cost Hawaii 15 yards. That is the kind of mistake they can't make. That's a good call by the officials, though. He definitely hit him late. Harbaugh is a dangerous runner out of that pocket. Now he's going to take a right up, make a nice move to the outside here, break a tackle. Now he'll be on the ground clearly, and Belcher will come up 63 and just lay it on him. May have had a face mask earlier, but Belcher got the helmet in there. The crowd doesn't like the call, but you can't fault the officials for making it. Dick Tomey is not very happy about it. Dead and ball. Personal foul on the defense. First down. Phil Webb, number 46, will check into the backfield. And Higgins, 31, comes in as a wide receiver. McMurtry comes out, and Jokic also comes out for Michigan. It's always a fine line, Mike, on defense between aggression and intelligence. You've got to keep control. You've got to be intelligent but aggressive. So Michigan now goes back to the wishbone inside Hawaii territory at the 46. Harbaugh gives to Morris. Nice hole there, and Morris brought down by John Levingston, the senior linebacker, number 34. Well, they are not blowing gaping holes in that Hawaii defense. 
Well, those kids are strong out there in Hawaii, and they are so pumped up for this game. I mean, they've just waited for it and waited for it. This crowd, this place was sold out way back in June. They're ready for this game. Morris has five carries for 16 yards. Jim Harbaugh has only tried two passes, hit one of them for 15. And Michigan now facing second and four. McMurtry comes back in as a wide receiver. He and Higgins are split far right and left, respectively. They'll run out of the eye. Morris. No, sir. No go. The All-American hit him in the backfield and got some help from his friends. What a play by Noga. They had two blockers on him. He absolutely split him and made the tackle. This is what I've been seeing for two days on films. This guy is incredible. They double team him right here. He's just going to split the two guys. Watch this. Right between them and make the tackle. Look at that. And that's a Michigan offensive line he's taking apart. He took on Dave Chester, number 64, 255-pound junior who was pulling on the play. Just stood him up, made the tackle. And you see the uh, balloons. Michigan on third and five. Hawaii showing blitz, and they back out of it. Now they come again, and Harbaugh dumps it over the middle. Higgins makes the catch at the 32. Right with him was Sam Moku, but he put it on the numbers. Nice throw by Harbaugh. He's off this back foot, but watch him deliver it. Right on the money, nice diving catch. That's what they need to do. They have to avoid the penetration by Hawaii and complete those passes on the secondary. Mike Hussar, 74, being helped off the field. He is a 289-pound left tackle. And Jerry Quarna, a 282-pounder, will come in to replace him. And you look at Michigan's wide receivers. Higgins averaging 19-3. Jokic averaging 21-9. And McMurtry averaging 23-4. That's not a typical Michigan offense. Well, when they catch the ball, they catch it for big numbers. Two tight ends in right now. And Higgins is the only wide receiver. Morris on the toss. And it's Noga. And then he got some help and a big shot from Brian Owens, who came up putting the shoulder on him. But Morris did get some decent yardage out of that play. Well, you just find Noga everywhere, won't you? Well, you don't make first-team All-America for Hawaii unless you are outstanding. And the reason he is outstanding is his penetration, his ability to play off blocks. This guy outweighs him by 40 pounds. Look at him. He's Hammerstein's a big, strong guy. He just plays off him, keeps moving laterally, and makes the play. Michigan will go back to the wishbone and have no tight ends in the ball game. Two wide receivers. Cross out Michigan with the tape. That's what that football team would like to do. Second and eight. Our ball with a long signal kick. And wants to throw out of that formation. Deep sideline, and it's complete to McMurtry at the 18-yard line. McMurtry had defenses beaten easily. That's a formation you don't see very often, a wishbone with wide receivers and no tight ends. The ball has really it's, you know, installed a different offense for this Michigan team. A lot of formations, a lot of movement, uses his wide receivers. Here we go. Fakes the uh, wishbone right there, just drops back, and he is wide open. And look at the delivery. That's a long, long out route. Perfect pass. First down. Big arm for Jim Harbaugh, who can do it all. First and 10, Michigan tied with Hawaii 3-3 at the Rainbow 19. And they'll give it to Perriman. Perriman got to about the 16-yard line in the entire center that a Rainbow defense stacked him up. Hey, you come into a game like this, you expect the name Jamie Morris to dominate this game. It just hasn't been. They've had to go to their receivers to move the ball. He only needs 79 yards in this ball game. I say only. That's a, that's a pretty good chunk of yardage anyhow. As you see, he got 210 a week ago against Ohio State. But he needs 79 to become uh, a 1,000-yard rusher two years in a row. Hussar is back in there now, 74, the young man that was helped off. And now a Hawaii player is down. And Matt Folder, who has been out with a, uh, a what has seemingly been a chronic hip injury, is injured again. Something about Al Noga. When we did the Brigham Young game last week, you saw Jason Buck of Brigham Young who won the Outland Trophy. He didn't even win the WAC Player of the Year. That was Al Noga. We've got a timeout here in a 3-3 ball game. 
They don't call it paradise for nothing. We've really enjoyed our stay in Honolulu and really enjoyed the ball game. It's been a 3-3 thriller with 9.50 to go in the first half. Michigan scored first on a field goal. Hawaii came back to tie it up. And the Wolverines now driving. They face second and eight from the Hawaii 16-yard line. Morrison Perriman, the back's behind Harbaugh. Here comes Noga. Here comes everybody, and they sacked him at the 35-yard line. Brian Belcher, number 63, got there after Noga turned him around. That's the second huge sack for Hawaii. Well, Belcher hit him this time. He got Harbaugh, but he got him clean. He had the penalty earlier. A lot of this pressure was provided by Al Noga. He's just going to move out to roll out to his right. He's going to start feeling the pressure. He's going to reverse his field. And Belcher comes out of nowhere with some good speed and takes him down. Big play. Loss of 17. Michigan now with third and 25. All the tight ends will come out. And they'll go with three wide receivers. Jokic and McMurtry come to the near side. Higgins to the far side. Third and long for Harbaugh. Fake the draw. And he wants it all. Going for Higgins, and it's knocked away. And a flag goes down. Sam Moku knocked it away. This might be offensive interference. Boy, it sure didn't look like a defensive foul to me. Looked like excellent coverage. Moku was in perfect position. And it is against Michigan. That's a good call. It couldn't have been against Moku. He just played it perfectly. But did you see the look on Dick Tomey's face standing at the sideline like, don't you dare. The coach is always expected to go against him whenever there's a, a foul on interference. It always seems to be the defender. And offensive interference will take the ball almost back to midfield. I have offensive interference, pass interference against the offense, loss of down. That's what makes it such a big play. You lose the yards, you lose the down. Michigan had been, now here's the play. Oh yeah. Z31 definitely was pushing off. The Higgins was definitely pushing the defender. Good call by the officials. And you're right, Mike, they have to punt the ball now. They were down inside the 20. Now they're almost to the 50 and they have to punt. They had it at the 16 yard line. It's now fourth and 40. That was Walter Briggs who's standing deep to receive the kick of Monty Robbins. Big defensive stand for the rainbow. They came after Robbins again, and another short kick, and this time it will take a Hawaii bounce out near the 30-yard line. So the Rainbows will be in great shape to start from there after a kick that only went 19 yards. 8.33 to go in the half. It's still 3-3. Uh, there are a lot of nice sights in Honolulu. Yes, sir. About 50,000 of them here today, huh? It's hard you're to study anything. anything. Yeah, they said that the sun's a difficult thing, you know, makes it tough for you to study, get ready for a game. But you're right, there are a lot of different <laughs> sites, and not just Diamond Head. Yeah, a lot of different things to take your mind off your business. Hawaii. Back on offense, they'll start from their own 30. Tipton changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And he gives off to his fullback Lopati, and Andy Moeller will bring him down with some help from his friends. Tipton thought he saw something there and wanted to take advantage of it with a play change. Well, Andy Moeller is a big tackler for Michigan. He has 116 tackles coming into the game. Very active in the middle. Very strong. Plays off the block. That's perfect execution for a middle linebacker. He read it well. Just got rid of the uh, blocker and took on the ball carrier. Very strong in there. Gain of three, second and seven. Tipton has been perfect in the air, wants to screen. Got crawl. And lunges to the 40, maybe the 41 yard line. Nice effort by Crowell to just get what he could get out of it. Air Hawaii, Crowell takes it in, takes it off the ground, makes the first down, and all on his own. Nice blocking in front of him, just dumps it off. Now watch him. He's going to catch this ball. Nice blocking in front of him. There's not much room, so watch him. Take off right here. Picks up that first down all on his own. He just gets nailed again. These Michigan people, when you get beyond the line of scrimmage, you're going to feel it. And there's a player down. Moeller was the guy uh, who took his leg out from under him, and McIntyre is the man who was down. He's the one who applied the finishing hit. Moeller was the villain, though, because he took that one ankle out of his 
out from under him. Well, he's built like an offensive lineman. Boy, he sure is. They all are. McIntyre didn't want to go out of the ball game, and he's going to have to go out for at least a play. ESPN's live presentation of college football will continue December 13th with the NCAA Division II Championship, 12.30 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Make that 9.30 Pacific. And later that afternoon, Miami of Ohio and San Jose State will meet in the California Bowl. Airtime 5.30 Eastern for that one, 2.30 Pacific. Stay with us on ESPN for the best in college football. Had a great one here today, 7.35 to go in the half. And it's 3-3. First and ten for Hawaii. Tipton wants to throw in first in. Dumps it over the middle of the hall. Is tight end to the 47-yard line. Andy Moeller made the tackle. And Tipton has just set another record. This one with career completions. 354, and he broke Rafael Cherry's record in doing it. Well, he was very patient. Dumped that ball off to the tight end, which is a nice play. But uh, I happen to notice down deep, they had Coldine Walsh wide open at the post. I think they're going to start trying to take away that crossing route underneath, and they could go on top. He was wide open on that play. Now, eight out of eight for 88 yards. Can't do much better than that. Second and four. And it's going to be a first down in Michigan territory, and Crowell just rolled through there. Todd Schulte, number 41, who's in at linebacker from McIntyre, made the tackle. The last couple of weeks, Mike, I really think we've seen this WAC conference. You know, they have a reputation of being uh, offensive teams, but I'll tell you, Hawaii plays very tough defense. We saw BYU San Diego State last week, very tough on defense. And they can move the ball on offense, but much more conservatively than we anticipated. That's right. You're right. We've seen three very good whack teams. And look at the total yards so far. Michigan has simply been shut down with six and a half minutes to go in the half. Tipton with a fake naked reverse. Got rid of it and overthrows the tight end hall. And a flag is down. This one may also be offensive interference. Chris Mester Gaskell. was applying the pressure, but they had Gaskell downfield. I think he shoved somebody. He was definitely blocking the defender in that. Nice call by the official. And it is offensive interference against Hawaii, and all the Michigan defensive backs were pointing on it. Well, it really wasn't Gaskell's fault. You know, the ball was behind him. They were looking for a naked little misdirection short dump to the tight end underneath him. His job is to block, clear and block on that play. And once again, this is not only yardage, this is loss of down. So it really hurts. We have pass interference against the offense. Loss of down, second down. Low right screen right here. Gaskell's blocking number 13, Garland Rivers. With Definitely the ball in the air. Ball was in the air. He cannot do that. Had the ball already been caught, it would have been a fine block. As it was, definitely a penalty. That's two in this quarter. Unusual calls, offensive interference. Second and 25 for Hawaii. Tipton checks with his backs. Michigan showing blitz. And they'll go with a draw. 44-yard line for Junior Lapati. Mallory comes up from the secondary along with Dieter Heron. Let's go down to the sideline and our colleague Tim Brando. Andre McIntyre checked out of the game. He got what they term as a stinger. He's back in the game right now, though, so they need him defensively. In fact, it's interesting what the coaches for Hawaii are getting done here. They're running up the middle, and then they're coming right back with that pass over the middle, and it seemingly is always there. Just a couple of mistakes and penalties is all that stopped them. You're right, Tim. If they have found an opening, and they're exploiting it. You know, the other thing, one thing you can tell when a team is not really prepared, and I don't think Michigan is up emotionally as they have been for a lot of games this year, you start missing tackles. And we've seen that. The uh, yeah. linebackers in the secondary are laying some big hits on. But the front three, and some of the linebackers are missing those tackles, and that's the first sign of a team not ready to play. Good look at Tipton, who has just been exceptional. Eight out of nine, but that the incompletion was really wiped out by the penalty, by the offensive interference. And they, the delay has been moving the Michigan players back from their sideline. When you look at the sideline, there is a white stripe there, and they want everybody out of that white striped area behind it. So that's why we've had a delay. And we've got a third and 18 for Michigan. I mean, uh, Hawaii, excuse me. Michigan showing blitz. They come again, and Tipton's got unloaded in a hurry. He's got Hall as tight end. And Hall, trying to spin out of a tackle, gets to the Michigan 43-yard line. It's going to be short of a first down. Rivers and Moeller made the tackle, but they've used Ron Hall very well. 
Tipton got rid of that ball in a hurry. New Hall was coming underneath. They ran all the secondary off deep, that zone of Michigan's. They had no one underneath. Hall was wide open. That's exactly what Tipton has to do. Well, it's fourth and five. Interesting choice here between the Michigan 43 and the 44. And Dick Tomey thought about it maybe fleetingly for going for it, and then he brings in his punting team. Well, that drive was definitely stopped by the unfortunate uh, offensive interference on that first down play. Made it first and 25. Kyle Allo will punt. That's Tony Gant deep to receive. We're down to five minutes and 38 seconds to go in the half. 3-3, Michigan and Hawaii. And the Rainbows have dominated the ball game. And the 25-second clock ran out. I think Hawaii was hoping to draw Michigan off sides on a fourth and five situation. They always did that with Pat McAnally, even if he had 60, 70 yards to go, because he needed that extra five yards in case he got the bounce. Uh, the defense would jump offside just so I wouldn't punt. They wanted to keep <laughs> the ball out of my hands. What a weapon. Uh-huh. But Dick told me, you know, he looks relaxed. He's fired up for this game. But it's so funny. Bo Schimbeckler, Beckler, yesterday he was trying to be smiley, trying to be a nice guy, saying he wouldn't take the game that serious. He's on the sidelines. I'm watching him rampaging along. He's ready for this game. Now they want 10 seconds back on the clock. They're saying it should be 535. The scoreboard shows 525. So now the kicker, Kyle Alu, will have more room to work. Now, Dick told me just an outstanding job here at Hawaii. We were looking at all the different places. They have kids from New Zealand, Australia, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Canada, my favorite, Alaska, who's probably the most intelligent guy on the team, you from bet. Alaska to Hawaii. I mean, just an outstanding job. Yeah, you're sitting in Alaska as an 18-year-old kid say, where can I go to school? You look, at these, look at these locations, though. And Saskatchewan, that's not a bad idea from there, either. That's tough. You know, they have a difficulty getting the kids from the mainland, but they find them somewhere. Michigan showing a 10-man front. Alou may have to unload this in the hurry. Got a high snap. They're coming, and he got rid of it. Beautiful kick. They'll let it go. Will he get the bounce? He will, but down at the one. Michigan at a hole with 5.24 to go in the first half of play. We're tied at three. They marked the ball at the three-yard line. That's where Michigan will have to take over possession with 5.24 to go in the half. The Wolverines heavily favored, tied with Hawaii 3-3. Three, three. They'll go to the wishbone to try to get out of trouble. Gives it to Morris. Morris slashes across the five to about the eight-yard line. Owens up from the secondary to make the tackle. And Michigan just trying to get a little breathing room right now. You see the numbers on Morris, who's been averaging close to 100 yards a ball game, only has 21 and eight carries. I think Bo Schembechler would be very happy to get out of this first half tied 3-3 without making a mistake down here. Definitely. This is what they want to avoid. Even if they can't make the first down, they probably will be able to grind it out. They want to get that punt team in there, get the ball back to Hawaii. Perriman and Morris in the backfield in the eye behind Harbaugh. Morris across the 10, maybe to the 12-yard line. Hawaii really hitting hard and going after that football. Nogas playing it. 240, can't even see him. Elliot's so big, oh, look 72, at that 300 pounds, but he sheds him and makes the play. I mean, the guy is so quick, he couldn't even see him in the picture, but then again, the offensive lineman can't seem to find him or see him either. Gee, oh, he's so quick. Reminds me a lot of Mike Reed, who was an all-pro from the Cincinnati Bengals in the 70s. Elliot's all Big Ten. He is a heck of an offensive lineman. And Noga said, excuse me, <laughs> and just walked right around him. Third and one. Digging in. They'll give it to Perryman. And Perryman with second effort. Got forward to get the first down. Belcher and Levingston made the stop. I just think it's such a pleasure to, you know, you see a player that's all America that's built up, and it's so so great to see somebody live up to it. That's right. This kid is playing in Hawaii. Nobody's ever heard of him. And we said Jason Buck won the Alba Trophy for BYU this year, a WAC conference player. And Noga probably will be the favorite going into 1987. That could be two in a row from the WAC. Noga beat him out for the WAC Defensive Player of the Year, even though Buck won the Outland Trophy. And Noga will now go to the sideline. He'll get a breather on first. First and ten, clock running with 3.34 to go in the first half. Harbaugh 
the draw to Morris as they keep it conservative. Morris just dancing through tackler. Skipped over another one. And now it's a foot race. Morris to the 45, 50-yard line, driven out of bounds by Kefensis. A 35-yard run. What a run by Morris. The two longest runs that uh, Hawaii's given up this year are 15 yards. Well, they just gave up a big one here. Jamie Morris, I think you've heard the name Joe Morris with the New York Giants. Here comes a clone of him. This kid runs the same way. Look at that. Stop on a dime. Keep low. He keeps so low. And he's so strong after he starts upfield. No question. He's got a future in the NFL. They might be playing together in the same backfield. Morris 10 carries 60 yards, and now Michigan can go for some points with 305 in good field position across midfield Hawaii's territory. I understand Jamie says he can sometimes hear Joe talking to him when he's carrying the ball. Not too sure about that, but uh, if he hears it, that's fine. And Joe apparently is giving him excellent advice. Perriman well, he got to the 41. He hears a lot of footsteps as he runs by people. No question about that. Yeah, the footsteps are all behind him, though, to chase him. Perriman now with 31 yards. Michigan getting a, a little bit better uh, ground attack going. Hey, changing uniforms, you would not be able to tell those two apart, you know what? You sure couldn't. Second and three. Whistle. They'll stop playing. I don't believe they got to play off inside of that 25-second clock. And if they didn't, it'll cost them five. And instead, it's a procedure call. Sometimes they call procedure on that instead of delay a game. Shem Beckler uh, standing a couple of yards ahead of the field. He just didn't, on didn't keep Bo behind that, uh, that white area very long. You're going to be lucky if you can keep him out of the huddle. It was a lot of fun to talk to him yesterday. He had so much fun with you <laughs> talking about guys that had played in those all-star games. And uh, when you reminded him that he had made you practice on Christmas Day, he said, no, I didn't. But he started thinking about it, and he was proud that he, he had. He was proud that he had. That's right. Very pleasant visit with him. I wouldn't want to talk to him right now, though. No. No, he's probably not in the mood to chat on second and eight, tied 3-3. Three, three. Noga is now right on the nose, and he's being double-teamed in the middle. Harbaugh throwing deep over the middle. McMurtry! He took a shot and held on. No, he dropped it. Oh, I thought he held the ball. Sam Moku hit him. And McMurtry, and look at Bo. Bo's more than two steps in right now. That definitely looked like a catch to me. I thought he held it. And Bo is beside himself. And nobody else wants to be beside him. And you can't be out on the field. And now the official is over there telling one of the assistant coaches he can't be on the field, but they're leaving Bo alone. They should call a penalty here on him. Yeah, you can't be out there like that, really. And Michigan has called a timeout. And Bo is just raging about this. This looked like an outstanding catch by Greg McMurtry. Harbaugh strung him out a little bit. Well, if you needed to light a fire, all you'd have to do is touch a match to his forehead right now, and you'd get it. And I think he's got a point. Well, it was just a matter of time. He was too relaxed yesterday. I knew that couldn't last. Oh. And Bo was very, very close to a 15-yarder. And the Hawaii crowd really getting on him. Well, let's see if this is a grab or not. I call that a catch myself. He had his foot down. You only have to have possession with the ball, one foot down in college. That's a catch to me. I haven't seen it come loose yet. Outstanding effort by McMurtry. Just strung out, reaches, pulls that ball in. Oh, no, it is incomplete. No, he caught, caught it. it. That's a definite catch. He Maybe. dropped it and caught it before it hit the ground. Oh. What a great catch by McMurtry after the Moku drilled him. Now what are the odds? This ball gets stripped loose from his right hand. Right here. Nice play by the defender. Takes away that right arm. Strip the ball a little bit. It'll pop loose, but now he'll land on his back. Look at kick it off his shin right into his stomach. That is a catch. He made the catch. And Bo has a point. We're tied at three with 2.09 to go.
Michigan now facing third and eight from the Hawaii 47-yard line after they were denied a big play. McMurtry, obviously, on the replay, made the catch. Here comes the blitz. Harbaugh with a screen. Perriman gets away from one tackler, but not from another. And Hawaii's defense just swarming over everybody. That was a great call by Michigan against the blitz. They got the screen, and Hawaii still defensed it. Let's get down to Tim Brando. Tim? The reason why Bo Schimbeckler was so upset, he asked the back judge on the call on a pass catch by McMurtry, did you see the play? No, I want to know, did you see the play? The back judge simply turned away. That's why Schimbeckler went crazy. That may be the reason why he didn't get called for a 15-yard penalty. Tim, I think you're right. I think somebody decided that they may have blown it and they were going to let Bo have his say on the sideline. And they will have to punt it away. On fourth and seven, clock running, we're down to a 118 left, and Briggs is standing at the 15. They don't come strong this time, and a floating kick. Briggs, fair catch, makes it at the 11, and Hawaii will start from its own 11-yard line with a minute 11 to go in the half after a 35-yard kick. Coming up at halftime, we'll have our Heisman Trophy recap. And Chris Berman and Beto Cook will be in the studio. They'll have first half highlights, not only of this game, but they'll have Army, Navy, and Brigham Young Air Force, the other two big games being played today. Army and BYU winning earlier today. That was truly one of the most unusual catches I've ever seen. Just your basic off the shit shin bone, and I'll take the catch while I'm on my it back. Was. Outstanding catch, and uh, the referees obviously were just blocked. Now let's see if Hawaii will be conservative and try to run out the clock. Keep it on the ground, Quawel. Get out to about the 15-yard line. I'm sure the last thing Dick Tomey wants to see with all the turnovers his club has made this year is a mistake down here that would deny him a 3-3 tie at halftime. I think he's very fortunate that they're nearing the end of the half here because Michigan is really emotional right now. We said they came in a little flat. I guarantee you they're not right now. It's McIntyre coming out of the ball game for the second time. It appears to be favoring his shoulder. Clock stopped. Now it's running again with 47 seconds in Hawaii. Obviously just taking their time. Only have to get off uh, maybe one other play. And then they can just run out the first half. They'll give it to Crowell again. It's up to about the 17-yard line. Moeller in on the stop. Now the officials still have not marked the ball ready for play, so I won't have to snap it again. Well, it'll be interesting in that second, then the second half to see if this uh, temperature does affect uh, Michigan. They very <laughs> it's hot to them. I mean, they have not practiced in this kind of weather. It could wear them down eventually. Of course, it's rather cool right now. I think it'll be rather hot in the Michigan locker room during the halftime. And Bo still eyeing the officials as he walks off the field here at Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. A very good one for the Hawaii Rainbows. You look at this game statistically, and it's worked out perfectly for them, Mike and Pat. They've mixed the running with the passing, and right now that's the reason we're tied at three. Tim, they've done an incredible job, uh, 146 yards in total offense, and really their defense has been able to shut down Michigan, Pat. Well, they stopped the running game other than one big run by Morris and their quarterback. Greg Tipton's come in, thrown nine for ten with 100 yards, no interceptions. Michigan will kick off to start the second half. Excuse me, Hawaii will kick off to start the second half, and Michigan will receive. Deep to receive Campbell and Morris. Speak to the 34-yard line, and Michigan will have good field position to start at that point. Al Noga, by the way, will wear number 54 in the second half instead of 44. He wore 44 for his brother Pete, who was injured and can't play today. If he plays as well for himself as he did for his brother, Michigan's offense is in trouble. Maybe he thinks if he wears 54, they won't block him with three guys in the second half. They'll start from the 34-yard line. And one of the offensive linemen moved, and Noga comes across and bangs into John Elliott. And I think that part of that was caused by Elliott being so nervous about the quickness of Noga. Beat him so bad earlier in the first half. 
Elliott is 6'7", 306. All Big Ten. And the call will go against the Wolverines. You can see Elliott move, and now he's going to take a free shot. Al Noga. But you got to, you know, you look at Elliott, 300 pounds. He's got a roadrunner that can bench press 385 pounds across from him. He doesn't know what to do. He's got to be get out of his stance in a hurry. Too You're fast on that ball. occasion. Plus, he ball probably starts. needs some help. On the offense, first down. So Michigan's first possession in the second half does not start on the greatest note. They have first and 15 after the procedure call. Harbaugh has Perriman and Morris behind him in the eye. Higgins is the wide receiver to the near side. Morris banged as he got to the line. The ball came loose, but after the whistle. Hawaii's defense has been so impressive all day long. Noga is just incredible on this play. Again, he is so fast. He uses his arm over technique. Watch this. He won't even get touched. Look at that. Arm over like he's a wide receiver. Goes right down the line of scrimmage and makes the play. He got away from two blockers. The back would have uh, normally gotten him if he got uh, gotten by the offensive lineman. Nobody touched him. Just an exceptional player. Lives up to all the accolades he's received. He's just going to get better by next year. He's going to help this Hawaii program. Yokish number 84 into the wide receiver. To the near side with McMurtry on second to 14. Harbaugh chased out of the pocket. He's going to run with it. Across the 40 to the 47, 46 yard line. He's got the first down. Brought down by Levingston. Here's what Michigan was able to do with it in the first half. The first time they got the ball was their best drive. Nine plays and it resulted in the field goal. The next three, three plays in punt, then a nine play drive that was stopped by a sack, and an eight play drive that also resulted in a punt. So Michigan's offense, except for that first drive, produced absolutely nothing in the first half. Harbaugh with a good hustle out of the pocket that time, ran for the first down, and has a first and ten for the Wolverines to go back to the wishbone. Web number 46 is in there. And here is movement in the line once again. It's Dana Directo, the nose guard, this time pointing to another offensive lineman. We'll see who jumps. That's always my favorite play. The nose guard always tries to blame the center, even if he's offsides. <laughs> And this time they said Dana Directo was the man who did it. You see him point at Vitaly immediately, though, so sure. <laughs> the guy never did anything that's not the ball. Lower left the screen. I mean, no question about it. Now watch him point. He did it. He did it. Of course, he didn't. That is Dead the fifth ball. penalty against Hawaii, Approach 45 limp. yards. On the defense, first down. I wonder if the nose guard has ever won that argument. <laughs> Not that I've seen. It's first and five. The ball at midfield. You join us late. It's 3 3. Hawaii and Michigan. Third quarter. Morris. Got a seam that time and picks up about five. Brought down by Levingston, number 34, and one of the inside linebackers. He's in there for Thad Jefferson. Jefferson, an outstanding linebacker. If he hadn't been hurt this year, would have undoubtedly been the number one tackler in Hawaii history. But he's been playing injured. He strained a knee ligament at the end of October, and right now he's not in there. He's going to measure for the first down here just inside the Hawaii 45. And they've got it. I think the second half will be a, a much tougher test for this Hawaii team. They came into the first half, they were fired up, their emotion was carrying them. Now they've got to take the big load of this offensive line of Michigan's running attack with Jamie Morris. It'll be much tougher to stop them this half. Once again, Michigan goes to that formation with no tight ends. Out of the wishbone, wide receivers left and right. And Noga comes from the outside and hit him in a hurry and brought him down. He's just exceptional at shedding blockers. You know, they never seem to get a shot at him. Uh, he just, he's like a torador. You know, he just throws the guys aside. Let's watch him right in the screen. Right in the middle of your screen, you can see him. He's going to take on the blocker and he never gets touched. Just throws him aside, makes the play. He is tough. <laughs> Something to be said for quickness. Quickness and intensity, and he has both. Plus, he is very, very strong. Second and eight. The Wolverines at the Hawaii 42-yard line were tied at three. 12 minutes and 20 seconds to go third quarter. Hawaii is going for its biggest win in the history of its football program. They can pull this one off. Hard ball against the three-man rush. Dumps it off. 
complete to Webb out of the backfield. Webb inside the Hawaii 25, maybe to the 24-yard line. Phil Webb, a seldom-used junior. What made this play work was the time. Harbaugh had all kinds of time, and he's shown us today he could deliver the ball. Nice tight spiral. Nice block here. Jokic made Jokic. a nice block. Noga's going to get a lot of attention this half, I guarantee you. Right here, he's double teamed, but he's not going to quit. Look at him. Still manages to get some penetration, but if he can take two guys on, that allows the linebackers to make more plays than the other defensive linemen. So he did his job. Harbaugh now five out of eight for 56 yards. It's another first down for Michigan. This is Morris hurtling tacklers to about the 18-yard line. Once again, Levingston, 34 at the bottom of the pile. You know, we mentioned last play that Paul Jokic threw a nice block. You know, this is a wide receiver who's 6'8", 240 pounds. Yeah. You don't see many of those around. And he's played hurt. He had a groin injury before the season start. Has never really started, never really been healthy since. McMurtry and Jokic. Jokic goes out. McMurtry comes back in. He'll flank to the near side on second and six. And the Hawaii fans trying to drum up a little support for that rainbow defense. Again, out of the wishbone. Harbaugh reading it. He'll keep it. Harbaugh at the 10. And they get him out of bounds at the three-yard line. Driven out by Kyle Kofensis. Well, they burn him on this play. Hawaii dropped into a four-man line. They didn't have the extra support. They're normally in the three-man line. They went four. They didn't have the outside force. Watch him get outside very easily. They gave up an outside backer. They didn't stop this option. They just ignored Harbaugh. He just picked it up. Look at the blocking downfield. All the way. Nice block by McMurtry. Almost took it into the end zone. 16-yard game for Jim Harbaugh, who finished third in the balloting release today in the Heisman Trophy. It's first and goal, Michigan. They'll give it to Webb, and Webb will lose a yard. First man to get to him was Colin Scott's 94, who got a hold of an ankle in the backfield. It's just going to be tough on this defense for Hawaii because they are outmanned physically by this Michigan offensive line, and the running backs are so good. And the other factor is Harbaugh is such a good passer this year. They've been able to, again, gain more yardage through the air than on the ground. Puts a lot of pressure on your front three and those linebackers. Thomas Wilcher, number 27, is in the ballgame at a running back spot. He's a track All-American for the Wolverine. He's the man on the right side of that wishbone setup on second and four. Second and goal from the four. And Harbaugh wants to run the action. He's got an opening. Jim Harbaugh, touchdown, Michigan. this one. And the wishbone plays, Pat, are the ones that really helped on this drive. Well, they're just so big up front. Harbaugh runs the uh, option very well. He's already scored six touchdowns this year, so he's no stranger to the end zone. They executed it well. Gillette is on to try the point after. And he booms it through. So Michigan, for the first time today, with 10-15 to go in the third quarter, gets the touchdown. Harbaugh really has no decision to make on this. He's not. They haven't accounted for him on two plays. Once when he went left, now he goes right, and he's got the end zone all to himself. He dives in and makes it. But they're not assigning a, a, a defensive man to him, and they have to do that or they'll never stop that option. 10-15 to go in the third quarter. Our score here in Honolulu is Michigan 10 and Hawaii 3. Honolulu, Hawaii, and the entire crew has made a group decision. We're not leaving. <laughs> Just send the uh, spare clothes and the checks over here. Honeymooning in Hawaii and at the ball game to boot. Michigan will kick it off. That's Pat Moons as the Wolverines have taken a seven-point lead in this hardly fought ball game. Walsh is deep to receive to the middleman of the three. Back there with defenses and Vegas. And it's Vegas at the seven. Fumbled it. Went the wrong way. Had some room inside. Went outside and is dumped by Thomas Welcher, the backup running back. 
Michigan finally got something going on offense. 66 yards in nine plays. Took them almost five minutes. And Harbaugh took it in on the option to cap that drive. Now we'll see if Hawaii can counter. Well, they had to go to their wishbone to uh, really move the ball. But that's the thing about Michigan's offense this year. They have a lot of different weapons and they use them well. And in the past, that has not always been the case with Michigan football. They're primarily a running team that had a difficult time coming from behind. And now the officials are going to the Hawaii sideline. Let's go down and check with Tim Brando right now. There's a very special happy man that's with me right now. His name is Jack Harbaugh, the father of Jim. It appeared as though that Bo Schembechler made the right choice in going to the wishbone and putting a, the Hawaii defense in a heat with your son. I think they put real pressure on him. They came out on the wishbone, and they're hitting with those quick thrusts now and taking advantage of the small defensive line. Jack, we talked about it earlier at the top of our show, and a, and a very good feature we thought on your son, uh, Jim Harbaugh. It's almost over now for him, and almost over for you as a as a, a father and, a, and as a coach, per se. We're excited about it. Jackie, his mother, and I have gone through this thing as coaches and parents. We feel we represent all the parents across the country. We're very, very proud. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Hawaii, first and ten, deep in its own territory, and forget it. The run by Permetter, a flag is down, might have a face mask on that. Mester was the first man in there. Harris was also in on the stop. And we'll see what the call was. And the Michigan people are reacting uh, unhappily, so you have to assume it is against the Wolverines. Face mask it is. And that'll help get Hawaii out of a hole, and uh, you don't need any commentary on that. Made excellent penetration on this play. I don't know if we'll be able to see the face mask for sure, but there's no question that he's up high into the head region right there. Just rips him down. Yeah, he definitely had the face guard on that. And the thing is, no need for that play. He had an easy tackle. No problem. He should have just taken him down. Unfortunately, his hands We have a face up. mask on the defense. First down. Still first. First and five. I think Bull made a little fire during the halftime. He, yeah. He was livid when he went in there, and I'm sure some of that emotion was thrust right at his players. They sure would come out and play differently. Call will give Hawaii five yards, and you saw the penalty statistics there. It's first and five. Rainbow still inside their own 20. Permetter gets absolutely nothing. Harris, again, the first man to hit him. And here's what the Rainbows were able to do in the first half. Really, they moved the ball rather well. They lost their first drive on a fumble. The second time they had it, six plays they had to punt. Then their best drive, 11 plays that resulted in the tying field goal. The next two times they had the ball, they moved it a little on that first drive, but had to punt and ran out the clock at the end of the first half. It's second, and they'll call it four from the 20. And Michigan showing a little more intensity on defense against the ground game right now. Tipped it quickly out. Dias got away, and five Michigan defenders are over there to run him out of bounds, led by Garland Rivers. Looks like Michigan's defense playing a little tighter toward the line of scrimmage, Pat. It doesn't look like they have anybody deep in that secondary. Yeah, they really were. The secondary came up, and they had a little double coverage, which is unusual for them. On the Twins out here, they had three men covering two. And in that case, they just threw a little pass, and Rivers was right up there in his face as soon as he caught it and made a nice tackle. So I don't think they're going to give Hawaii that crossing route quite as easily as they did in the first half. Tipton now 10 out of 11 and 102 yards for Coach Dick Tolley. This is third down and long. Tipton wants the screen. Completes it to Lapati. And Lapati has the first down at Hawaii's 27 yard line. Garland Rivers and Folkertsma on the stop. There's no question that Hawaii has uh, kept their offense in perspective. They want to come out, they want to stop the penetration by Michigan with a lot of screen passes, some draws. They haven't changed their game plan. They're down by a touchdown. But as you said earlier, Mike, they moved the ball well. And the time they did get the field goal, they had a tight end open for a touchdown haul. Just delivered a little late. They really, if you missed the first half, Hawaii really dominated. Michigan, the fourth-ranked team in the country. Big Ten champions on the way to the Rose Bowl. Here's Tipton, fakes the option, then dumps it to Hall. Hall to the 40, 45-yard line. Mallory brought him down along with David Arnold. Beautiful. Beautiful design on this play. He had a wide receiver outside of him, and Hall just going to release inside and 
Kipton finds him and delivers it. He looked outside first, faked. Right, here's a play action now. He's going to go outside, but no. Here comes Hall right in the middle of the picture. Nice delivery, and Hall can run with the ball once he catches it. But again, it was Tipton. Very good patience. He didn't go outside. He saw Hall open and delivered the ball. He's almost perfect today. Hall has made four catches for 49 yards. Tipton has hit 11 of 12 tosses. First and 10, Ray Bosa at the 45. They'll go to Fakama, who's into the ball game for the first time. He gets near midfield. Mallory, the strong safety, comes up to make the tackle. And here's the hurry-up offense trying to catch Michigan napping. And they'll snap it. They're throwing everything at Michigan. They've got a first down. The toss was to Quabble. I love it. That was a basic play at Harvard. And the Ivy League, we use that all the time. <laughs> That's not a trick play. Oh, you got to love this. Big Tommy's pulling everything out. Tipton snaps the ball, the quarterback. And he does a nice job, but Michigan doesn't know what to do. They should have called timeout. They didn't have time to do it, and they were lucky this wasn't a play for a touchdown. Look at that corner. Nice blocking, first down. I tell you what, if they do it again, Crowell may throw it because Tipton took off to the right side. There wasn't a soul with it. First and 10 Hawaii, the ball at the 42. Tipton dumps it out in the flat to Vegas. Vegas to the Michigan 38-yard line. Took a big hit from Heron and Arnold. And he had Ron Hall open again across the middle. This is a beautifully designed offense. They're really doing some nice things. Keith Vegas, the man who caught that ball, is a defensive back. Well, this is like their bowl game. You know, they have a chance to play yep. a team like Michigan, national television, and they were so pumped up. And you got to admire their cool. You know, they, they got behind by a touchdown, but now they're pulling out these trick plays and moving the ball. They it's have played. it's they have second played and four from Hawaii. They sure have. They have done a job. Tipton now 13 out of 14, 132 yards. Playing the game of his life. Ball got a first down at the Michigan 32-yard line. McIntyre had to make the tackle. These guys are fired up. I thought the momentum had gone Michigan's way, but somebody forgot to tell Hawaii. These fans also, you know, we're, this is supposed to be such a mellow place, but I'll tell you, this is one of the loudest crowds we've had all year. There's 50,000 of them jammed in here. It's been a sellout since June. Balls at the 32. First and 10. Hawaii down 10-3, but driving. Here's the blitz. They dump it off the foul. Shakes one tackle and gets to the 29-yard line. Volkertsma, the defensive tackle, chasing the play made the stop, and these guys don't want to go down. Have you ever seen a secondary hit like Michigan oh, does? Oh, they kill you. I mean, they, Rivers especially, they just come up shooting for people. There's Arnold, gets the hard hat off, looks like he's holding it right arm, and Eric Campbell back at the ball game in the corner. It's second and seventh. Tipped it to the play fake, dumps it over the middle, hand all open, and a big play there by Steve Thiebert, who dropped back from a linebacker spot and got a hand on it. Nice job on this by Thiebert. He closed the gap. It looked like Hall was going to be open on this play. Releases outside. He's really being held there. Let's him go. Now, it looks like it's going to be a completion just a little behind, but nice play by Thiebert. That's Very just nice excellent play. coverage by a linebacker. I'll with him man-to-man all, -man all the way. He's, Michigan is so big. Thiebert is 6'5", 240, and he's got the speed to go out and help on pass coverage. Third and seven, and the champ. Let's go, Bose. Here comes the blitz. They picked it up, and Tipton's got time to throw complete the tight. Holy cow, down to the 12-yard line. Watching Tipton right now, you have to wonder how this guy has not led him to an undefeated season. He's been incredible. Well, the reason this play works down the field at 18 to 20 yards is Ron Hall is going to cross crossing route, the tight end. They decided to come in and take the tight end away, and he found the deeper route. Look at Michigan just dropping back in their zone. There it is. Wide open over the middle. That's the spot they're vulnerable. Nice throw. There's a timeout with 5.49 to go third quarter. There are no linebackers in that picture. They all ran with Ron Hall. And now watch. Mallory hits Gant and takes him out. His own man. And Dias almost snuck through for a touchdown there. Arnold and Gant have both been injured in the Michigan defensive secondary on this drive. 
and it's a first and ten rainbows at the Michigan 13-yard line. They're down by a touchdown, driving to tie. Pacava, number 17, is in at fullback. Tipton wants to throw, pump fake, now throws deep, and his man got picked off. He was trying to hit Walsh, and Walsh was bumped by Ivan Hicks. Nice decision. We came at the, in at the top of the show saying if Tipton can come in, not force the ball, they had a chance in this game. In that case, he had a slant pass to Walsh. Walsh was taken away. He pumped it and just threw it out of bounds exactly what he should have done. Tipton's best passing game ever was 15 out of 19 against Colorado State as far as percentage. He's 15 out of 18 right now and 151 yards, and he has made one great decision after another. Second and 10. Go for the play fake. Tipton with time. Has a man out there. It's hole. Driven out of bounds at the one. It's first down Hawaii. Well, this play went because of a nice fake by Tipton. Watch this. The play action. Now watch him hide it on his hip. Right there. Can't see the ball. And now he just delivers this ball. This has got a lot of heat on it. Right past the defender to Hall. No problem with that completion. And that's the execution of the play action. Hall ran the pattern nicely. And Tipton delivered another bullet. Hall is caught five for 61 yards. It's first and goal. Wow. Touchdown, Hall! Michigan. Valverde will come in to try to tie it up. And Hawaii has Honolulu jumping. Hit drop right now. He hooked it, but he got it through. Permetter's going to go right over the top of this Michigan defense. And on the bottom is Mark Messner. They went right into the strength. Look at him, though. He made it. He's definitely across the line at the goal line. He just sticks the ball out. Look at him climb, though. Watch this. He just keeps going. He's not giving up. He wants his touchdown. Look at that. And that's the rainbow reaction as Permetter goes into the end zone to tie up fourth-ranked Michigan. Hawaii with a great drive is tied up number four, Michigan. And the rainbows will kick off. A little squid kick. They're trying to keep it away from the deep end, but Morris picks it up. Got back to about the 23-yard line, snowed under there. And Michigan will start deep in its own territory. That last drive, the Rainbows got the momentum back. They went 86 yards against an outstanding Michigan defense. And Permetter put it in the end zone to tie it up at 10. We've got a ball game from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. They mixed that offense up, Mike. They went with some runs, trick beautiful. plays, crossing routes, went to their tight end play action. That's what you have to do to beat a Michigan defense. You have to mix it up, and some gutsy calls did it. Now let's see if Michigan goes with the wishbone. They don't. They come out in the eye. The wishbone very successful on the last drive that scored for them. Harbaugh gets the pyramid. Pyramid. Gets popped a couple of times as he crosses the 25 to the 27. And Hawaii is in there hitting. One thing we have noticed in the second half, they are running the ball predominantly the left side. They're going to stay away from Noga if they can, which is good coaching. Yeah. But he's so quick that he can still cause some problems across the line of scrimmage with his lateral movement. But I think we'll see him run left a lot more. Higgins comes in as a wide receiver as he and Yoka's shuttle plays from Bo Schembechler in the Michigan bench at second and seven. Four minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. Third quarter, it's 10-10. Harbaugh wants to throw, flag is down. 
Harbaugh on the run and takes a dive at the 35-36 yard line. We'll check the penalty. It looked like maybe someone from Hawaii had jumped offside, but it looked like he got back before the snap. It looked like it to me, unless they call contact. Al Noga was at nose guard at that, that time and uh, definitely jumped early. Call is offside against Hawaii. They'll decline that because Harbaugh got the first down for 35. And Jim Harbaugh has hurt them, not with just his passing today, but he drops back in that pocket, and he has made a lot of nice runs right up the middle. He's just dangerous when he has the ball. First down. McMurtry coming out of the ball game as Harbaugh checks the signals. He's carried the ball seven times for 21 yards, got the only Michigan touchdown, passed five out of eight for 56. Well, it's deceptive on his rushing yard is because, of course, he was sacked. That's right. Big losses, so he's really hurt him a couple times. Sure has. First and ten, Wolverines. Behind that massive offensive line, Morris out of the wishbone set. Gets up to the 39. Boy, Brian Owens, number five, really flies up from the secondary. And by the time he gets there, usually somebody's standing straight up. <laughs> and they pay it. Here's Owens. He's a senior, 203 pounds out of Fullerton, California. Once again, they're back in these uh, this no tight end formation. Some of the fans on hand, the Aloha Stadium, will go with two tight ends. Make, I mean, uh, two wide receivers. McMurtry comes to the near side on second and five. Well, Harbaugh wants to throw. Guns it over the middle too high for McMurtry. Just couldn't handle it. Little crocodile arms on that one. I think they he pulled him down a little bit. We have not seen that from the Hawaii guy, kids. They've made some catches today when they knew they were going to get drilled by the Michigan defenders. I thought McMurtry pulled down a little bit on that. Definitely was a high throw. Now, Bo is really high on that young man. I remember he said at practice yesterday, he says, this is going to be our next great receiver. Only a freshman. And that's how good that Hawaii defense has been on third down, only giving up a fourth of those plays for first downs. So right now it's third and five. Michigan trying to get the momentum back. They're at their own 40. Harbaugh splits his backs this time. Morris and Paramount. Three wide receivers in the ball game. Here comes a five-man rush. Harbaugh with time, and he completes it to Jokic. And it's a first down. Well, he's a big target going across the middle at six foot eight, and Harbaugh definitely found him. McCray brought him down, but it's good enough for the first down. And look at his average per catch, 21.9. Let's look at the secondary. How are they playing it right now? They're just going to drop back in the zone. Well, now they're in the man right there. That's a man-to-man -man coverage with the free safety under, uh, down deep to take away the long pass. And Jokic is just so big, got his body, got open. Nice throw by Harbaugh. Big is right, 6'8", 239. First down Michigan, midfield. Morris really took a shot and bounced off of it. Still on his feet to the Hawaii 39-yard line. Jamie Morris, just like his little brother Joe, with great leg strength, and he's just gone over the 1,000-yard mark for the second straight season. Well, this is one guy you definitely have to wrap up and bring down because one big bang doesn't usually put him on the ground. He just gets hit. Most people would have been on their backs right now, right here. Boom! I'd have been on my back for sure. Now, look at him spin out of it. He doesn't lose any speed hardly. Picks it up north-south. It's just incredible to see two people run so similarly. I've never seen anything like it. And one of the uh, Hawaii defenders is down, and it looks like it's Brian Owens, the man who has delivered so many big shots. We'll check on him when we come back. We've got three minutes to go, third quarter. We're still tied at 10. Brought down at the sideline. Good tackle by Belcher. There's a case again where Hawaii went to that four-man front. They dropped into the defensive lineman down, and they didn't have the outside uh, pressure. They couldn't take away the ball from Harbaugh, and they just don't, they're not assigning anyone to him, and he's burning them with it. That could have been a big play. Got five yards on that. Here come the tight ends back in the ball game, two of them, Brown and Walker. We've seen a lot of different formations, a lot of different offensive systems uh, for Michigan. Makes it very difficult to prepare for him, but Hawaii's done an outstanding job this far. One wide receiver, that's Yopish. He comes to the near side on second and six, though, Paul. Told that Owens will be back. He all he had was a Charlie one. Morris. First down, still on his feet. What great balance. 
near the 25-yard line. Dana Directo, 97, and Patrick McCray, number nine on the tackle. Jamie Morris again, he's going to run. Mike said during the break that it's really Joe playing on weekends here, and he goes on Sundays for the Giants. Right there, nice block by Perriman, 37, double team the linebacker, and then it's just Morris again. Look at him keep his balance, though. He takes shot after shot, somehow keeps his balance and keeps running. 5'7", only 179 pounds, but I think it's all steel. Very impressive drive for Michigan. They're down to the 25-yard line. Hawaii's fourth-ranked national defense trying to dig in. Morris, this time he'll only get a couple. First man to hit him was Matt Fulner, 56, the senior out of Pacifica, California. Noga has not been a big factor here in the second half. They have tried to run away from him and give him a little more attention, although at times they had two men on him in the first half and it didn't seem to do too much. Well, it's awful tough for a defensive tackle or an end in the three-man line to dominate a game like yeah. he has. You just run away from him or you put two guys on him. Morris now to 103 yards on 17 carries. Perriman stumbles forward to the 20-yard line. And that's why I think it's important, Mike, to emphasize that a guy doesn't always have to make tackles. Al Noga, being the player he is, being double teamed so often and making them run the other way helps his defense as an entire unit. Sure does. He doesn't have to just make tackles. He was in on the stop that time, though. His statistics have been absolutely frightening this year with 17 sacks and 29 tackles in the backfield. Over half his uh, total tackles were in the backfield. Big play here, third and long for Michigan. Hawaii showing blitz. They don't come with it. Now Harbaugh in trouble. Dumps it off to Perriman. Perriman makes a good move to the 15, to the 10-yard line. And Jim Harbaugh's scrambling ability and Perriman's ability to dodge a tackle from Patrick McRae gets him a big first down. I can't believe Harbaugh even saw Perriman. I don't know how he found him. He's running for his life. Drops back. They're going to put a lot of pressure. He's going to pull the ball down right there. He almost threw it. Somehow kept it in his hand. Now watch this. How can he see him? It was like, he must have just known that he was sitting there because he absolutely could not see him with his eyes. Sometimes quarterbacks, particularly when they're experienced, they played a long time in a system. They just know where the people are. Montana does it all the time for the 49ers. And Hawaii has two players down. Folder 56 is now up on one knee. And Colin Scott's 94 is slow getting up. Tell you, they were everywhere on that play trying to chase Harbaugh and Perriman. And Scott's out of Sydney, Australia, is going to come out for a play. Tremendous individual effort by Harbaugh on that. That should have been a sack. They should have been ki either kicking a long field goal or punting here. Frustrating for a defense. Sure was. Harbaugh talking to that Michigan offense. He's got a first and 10 just outside the 10. Two seconds to go here in this third period. And you've got to hand it to the Hawaii's defense. They have done a job today. And the clock runs out on the third period of play. 15 minutes to go from Honolulu, Hawaii. Michigan and Hawaii are tied at ready to start the fourth quarter from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Michigan, at the Hawaii 10-yard line. First and 10, we are tied at 10. They'll go to the wishbone. Wiltshire number 27 is in there, along with Morris and Perriman behind Harbaugh. Perriman dives to the one-yard line. And the wishbone, Pat, has been the formation that's been most effective for Michigan. Well, in that part, particular play, they put Al Noga on the quarterback. They forgot to take away the belly, though, and Perriman just burned him big. They really hurt him with this. But again, they're so big and strong up front, it's awfully difficult. I mean, Perriman just has he's untouched. That's and it's because a, they tried to take away the outside play. It's a good thing for Harbaugh he didn't keep it because Noga was coming with a full head of steam. Smart quarterback, get rid of the ball. Second and inches. And they've got Webb in there for Morris in the backfield. Perriman, touchdown Michigan! see him 
coming into your face right here. Perriman just going to dive right over the top. There's just no way. The offensive line just blows him out, and he goes over the top. Noga tried to hit him, but there was no chance on that play. That was great height, particularly for a fullback. Gillette comes on for the point after Michigan leading at 16 to 10. And give the credit for that touchdown, keeping the drive alive to Harbaugh, who scrambled all over the place and dumped one off to Perriman earlier. And Gillette is perfect on the point after. 14 minutes and 17 seconds to go in this ball game. Michigan 17 and Hawaii 10. Of Hawaii, they're up 17 to 10, and we've got 14 17 left in the ball game. Michigan set to kick off. And making their five or six thousand supporters have made the trip very happy. That's Coldine Walsh standing at the five yard line, waiting on the kick of Pat Moons. The question is, Pat, can Hawaii come back on offense again? Well, they think like, like, oh boy. In English, they would like a big return here. They almost broke one, uh, the first one of the game. And uh, Coach Tomey told me they're very good on the special team returns. He looked for a big return tonight. At some point, maybe this will be it. Taken by Lapati. Lapati stays on his feet across the 25, marking it around the 26, 27 yard line. Hawaii will start from there. Last drive was impressive, 76 yards, took almost six minutes. But the big play was Harbaugh's scramble on third and long, and he had to dump it off to Perriman. They got a first down to keep the drive alive, and then Perriman scored himself from two yards out. And that's what's frustrating for the Hawaii coaches right now. They they played well on defense. Harbaugh made an they outstanding did. play. And for them to score offensively, as, as we saw last uh, drive, they have to play almost perfect football to beat this Michigan team. And Tipton has 16 out of 19, 163 yards, no interceptions. He had 18 pickoffs this year. And he's back to throw. Good protection over the middle again. And Dias just pulled up short of that one. Gant was back on coverage. I think Dias believed it was intended for somebody else. Let's go to Tim Brando at the sideline. Tim? Pat, I think you made the point in the first half. At the end of the first half, Michigan may not be used to the weather here. It may be tired. Well, I think it's going the other way. Perhaps so much energy was used up by the Hawaii defense in the first half. They're having difficulty just getting their breath over here on the sidelines right now, and they're hopeful that the offense can get something cranked up here. Second and 10 for the Rainbows from their own 26. Here comes the blitz, and Tipton again calls the screen against it. Gets it off to Crowell. And Crowell up to the 40-yard line. That will be a first down. Moeller makes the tackle. Boy, Tipton and the offensive coordinators for Hawaii have made some great calls. Well, that was nice execution right there. The right call. And, in fact, if he hadn't run over his own blocker, he probably would have picked up another 10 yards. And it was a perfect call because Michigan gambled. They were in a blitz. They brought their middle backers. They had nobody out there in the flat. And that could have been a big, big play, but they'll take the first down. Has to be a fun afternoon for Dick Tomey as he's facing a huge challenge from fourth-ranked Michigan, and he's played him to a standstill, although right now they're down by seven. First and ten rainbows at their own 39. Here comes a five-man rush. Tipped in with time. Throw short ball. Tipped in the air and almost intercepted. They were throwing for Wall. Schulte got a hand on it. Well, he forced this ball a little bit. It's one of the few of the day. Walsh makes an outstanding effort to prevent this from being an interception. Watch him lay out for that ball, take it away. Pops up in the air. They were fortunate it wasn't picked off. He did force that ball. He can't afford to throw it into three defenders like that. Tipton has had a great game. He has missed four of his last seven, though. Facing the second and ten right now from his own 39. It's Vegas in motion. Five-man rush again. He'll dump it up to Vegas in the flat to the 42-yard line. Schulte, again, number 41, is over there. Second time they have run that exact play, sending Vegas in motion and then tossing it to him. Well, Michigan definitely got together at halftime, and uh, they know they're going to have to change up their coverages, and that's exactly what they're doing in Hawaii now. Right now, they're not giving them those easy throws they had in the first half. And Vegas looked like he uh, may have been shaken up on the play. It's going to be a third and seven for the Rainbows who need to get the touchdown to tie it up again. They have tied Michigan twice at three and then at 10. 
tipped and chased out of the pocket. Throws and dropped by Tyus. Had it at the Michigan 44, turned to run with it, and forgot to catch the football. Oh, what a tough break as Tipton was on target. I think this is a couple of cases in this in this drive alone that David Dias really has felt the pressure of some of those big, big hits early. He stopped on a route earlier. This time, I know he feels that someone's going to come and hit him right there. He took his eye off the ball and hit him in the shoulder pad. That was a perfect throw. And Kyle Alou comes in to punt. Tony Gann is deep to receive. Hawaii will have to give it up on fourth and seven. A good kick here. He had to short hop that one. Low line drive. Gant will have a chance to bring it back from the 15. Trying to get outside, and a great tackle. Hall, the tight end on special teams, saved what could have been a monster return for Michigan. A loss of three after a 42-yard kick. Michigan leads by seven. Michigan will have the football with 12.35 to go in the fourth quarter. They're stuck from their own 13. Yeah, you know, I just want to say something about David Dias, who he said just dropped that ball for Hawaii. He has been playing with a broken finger, and he has to use his pads a lot of times. I'm yeah. sure that affected him on that play. It does make a difference. Michigan would like to sustain drive and get something out of it. Harbaugh back to throw. Here comes Noga. They'll come it out the flat to Morris on the screen. Hawaii converges it at about the 19-yard line, and boy, Noga was coming after Harbaugh. How fast did he get there? I mean, he ended up dropping Harbaugh in the end zone, but he's there almost before Harbaugh had the time to drop this ball off. He's fortunate it was a screen. He's unpicked up, but look at him close the gap here. Oh, this is a nice throw to just get rid of him. Now watch him put him in the end zone. Boy, that guy is fast. I would not want to pick him up like Harbaugh had to on that play when they leave him unblocked, even yeah. on the screen. He's a great player. They gained five on the screen, though, to Morris. The first first-team All-American ever for Hawaii. And you can see why. He has been brilliant all day. Morris on the delay. And Noga has him and gets some help. And they'll lose yardage back to the 17-yard line. Tremendous play again. The play before, we saw how fast he was. He just took off. Now this, he's going to take take on a blocker. He's going to throw Elliott, who's been second-team All-America in some uh, teams this year. Number 72, he's huge. But watch, Noga just gets rid of him and makes the play. The amazing thing is, not only is he taking on these big bodies, but somehow he sees under their arms, between their legs, he finds the ball carrier somehow. Michigan comes out on third and seven. The Hawaii defense trying to stop it. No tight ends in there. Three wide receivers and a split backfield behind Harbaugh. And Harbaugh to throw. Five-man rush. They come after him over the middle and incomplete. Knocked away from Jokic and a great play by Owens, who got a hand in there at the last minute because Harbaugh was on target. Beautiful defensive stand by Hawaii. Harbaugh has all kinds of time. He delivers this ball, but here's an excellent play by Owens. He's going to stick that left hand right in there and knock it away. Clean. Can't do it any better than that, though. He stripped that left hand right in there and knocked the ball down. Robbins to punt. They have come after him a couple of times, and in the first half, Pat, they got close. You want have to wonder if they'll do it again. They have a 10-man front. The man deep to receive his break, standing at the 50. They didn't get there, and he got out a cruncher over the head, and it takes the bounce. This is inside the 10-yard line. And they'll stop it at the 2. An 82-yard kick by Monty Robbins that gets his team out of a whole lot of trouble. And Perriman was the man downfield to down it. Not just an 82-yard punt, but 82 yards net, Mike. Under you can't pressure. hit him any bigger. They're gonna, they almost blocked a couple earlier. He forced a 19-yarder on him. This time, he drills it when he needs it. Look at the four. Beautiful toe, beautiful extension. He just hit it so far, the defender didn't have a chance to catch it. Nice roll. The longest punt in Michigan history. 82 yards, and the Wolverines lead it by a touchdown. 
What a turn of events. Michigan was punting from its own 17-yard line. Hawaii figured to have great field position, and here they are somewhere between their own one and two-yard line after an 82-yarder by Robbins, the longest in Michigan history. He has two of the three longest ever kicked at Michigan. Now Hawaii will go to the wishbone and try to get out of trouble. Permitter gets out to about the three. I guarantee he would never hit a punt like that in Michigan in 30-degree weather. He's so happy to get out here where the air is warm and you can launch one like that, and he took advantage of it. Launch is the right word. He had not been kicking well before that one. He'd only averaged 31.7 a punt. Now his average is up to 44.5. That's almost his season's average. Second and nine, Hawaii gains a yard. He's saying, I got to play the game so far, boys. And they'll throw out of the end zone. And just overthrown intended for Crowell out of the backfield. Mallory on the coverage. Tell you what, that's a gutsy call for Tipton. And now Hawaii is in a bind, third and nine. And Tipton looking toward the Hawaii bench for what they want to do. Who would have ever thought in a Michigan-Hawaii game that the game may turn on a punt? Yeah, a long punt. Not a punt block or anything like that. Tipton and the Rainbows with 10 minutes and 4 seconds to go in the game. They're down by a touchdown. And facing a problem here. Third and nine from their own three. Michigan comes on the blitz. Five-man rush. Tipton wants it all. Just floats it way up there. It's up for grabs. And tipped it incomplete. Ball was woefully underthrown that time. And Hawaii is going to need an 82-yard punt. This is very difficult for a punter, too, because they're inside the five-yard line, so he'll only be able to drop back 12 yards, which makes it very difficult to uh, extend. You get very nervous with all these bodies so close to you. You're worried about your quarterback you know, backing up right into your foot, which I had happened once, blocked by my own uh, blocker's rear end. Kyle Alou standing precariously close to that end line. Gant is waiting at the Hawaii 40-yard line to return this one. Alou needs to get one out of there. He gets out of beauty. Drives Gant back across midfield to the Michigan 45. Another big pressure kick. This one 52 yards by Kyle Alou, and he gets a hand from the crowd. This coming Monday, we invite you to join ESPN for a very special program, a profile of Vinny Testaverde. This year's Heisman Trophy winner will highlight his outstanding career and hear from those who are closest to him. Airtime, 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. And he certainly, if anybody ever deserves outright the Heisman Trophy, it's Vinny this year. He's been absolutely brilliant. To think that two years ago, he almost moved to tight end or transfer. Yeah. Michigan with the ball on its own 45, and Hawaii's defense has got to find a way to hold here the way they did last time. Wolverines back in the wishbone. They'll give it to Perriman. Perriman breaks it. It's a foot race. McCray trying to chase it down, and it's a touchdown, Michigan. run of the season and the Wolverines trying to break it open they're up 23 to 10 and Gillette will come on for the point after you don't see too many fullbacks on first down non short yardage situations break one for that long now they're just trying to stop that outside pitch game and Harbaugh and he just was untouched Gillette comes on for the point after the whole thing that set that up was the 82 yard punt two possessions ago well, Perriman really has had a big, the big plays in this uh, fourth quarter. And in this case, Harbaugh's just going to hand off on the belly. And they just don't have anybody there. He's just absolutely untouched. He can't run the option any better. The first option is hand off to the big guy, let him run. You don't expect him to go 55 yards very often. 
That's good speed. And the safety had the angle on him and couldn't catch him. A 55-yard touchdown run to give Michigan a 14-point lead in Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. There's Perriman on the sideline after a 55-yard touchdown run has given his team a 14-point lead. Here is a very high, very short kick taken by Hawaii, one of the up men at the 30-yard line, and flattened by Wilcher down on kick coverage. A 55-yard drive, so to speak, in nine seconds as Perriman's run. I think he ran faster than... Seconds and, 50 yards, so. and now Hawaii has a problem. The Rainbows, whose strong suit has not been offense, are down by 14 points. With 938 to go in the ball game. Michigan has now racked up 229 yards rushing against the fourth best defense in the country. Tipton is going to have to go to the air from his own 32. And they jump off sides, and once again, Tipton runs the play, he fumbled the ball. And Tipton did the same thing in the first half. When he saw Michigan offside, he just tapped the center. Joe Onasai, and he snaps it on the tap, and they pick up the penalty. It's a very smart play. Well, we have the chance. We want to thank our spotters today, Jim Schneider, Scott Kaufman, and Peter Ono for the great job they've done up here in the booth. Here's the call. And it's against Michigan. It'll cost them five. And, of course, Dr. Statistics, Chuck Freeby. Uh, he loves carrying that title. He's having T-shirts made up. Those are his Christmas <laughs> gifts to himself. <laughs> Dr. Stats. Now, we said earlier, though, Mike, for this Hawaiian uh, offense, they have to play Outside, almost perfectly. On the defense, first down. Last series, uh, they dropped a pass. It was a sure first down. Yes. And uh, they just can't afford to make any mistakes at all. Tipton has had a great game, as you see the numbers there. Give it off to Crawl. And Crawl gets close to the first down at the 43-yard line. Schulte is in there along with Ivan Hicks, the strong safety. It's just been a very unusual game. Uh, going in, you certainly wouldn't expect Perriman to be the star either for Michigan no. offensively. They've had to go to a different offense. You've got to uh, show some respect for that coaching staff for Michigan. They did a good job offensively in the second half. First time this year they've had two backs uh, go over 100 yards in the same game. Morris and Perriman did it today against a tough defense, which has really played its heart out. It is a first down for Hawaii from their own 43. Tipton play fake under pressure. Got away from the first man. Now he's going to run it. Midfield and gets to the Michigan 48-yard line. Nice job by Tipton. Schulte covered him there. And Tipton is shaking up a little bit, a little slow getting up. Michigan certainly has one of the top defensive lines in the country. Masters is taken out of the play. They come right up the gut. Harris, 56, had him. That would have been in the grasp in the NFL. But Tipton takes the ball, pulls it down, almost picks up the first down. He's fortunate to break that tackle of Billy Harris. That's a big guy coming at you, 6 feet, 270 pounds. Tipton's done a nice job. He gets to the 48-yard line of the Wolverines. Eight and a half minutes and counting. Hawaii down by 14. Trying to make the comeback on offense. Michigan comes on the blitz. This is Permetter. He gets to the Michigan 46-yard line. Messner and Harris on the stop this time. And it's another first down for the Rainbows. And talk about Hawaii's defense, too. You know, Mike, the entire season, 10 games, they'd only given up two runs, as I said earlier, of 15 yards, longest runs, and they've had three big ones tonight. Right. So Michigan's showing their prowess on offense. 16 first downs now for Hawaii. Michigan has 18 in the ball game, but the big statistic is on the scoreboard. A 14-point lead, and the Rainbows trying to cut into that. Tipton under pressure, wants the screen, and it's covered. Now he throws it again and incomplete. Tipton did a great job to get out of there. He was throwing for Crowell. There is a flag down downfield oh, at the down. Michigan 35. I think they had an illegal man downfield on that screen. Definitely. Took about 15 seconds to set up. And the guy got antsy. <laughs> Dieter Heron was all over Tipton. The officials discussing it now with 7.56 to go.
Moeller is the co-captain looking over to the Michigan bench, and it is, is an illegal receiver downfield. And it was James Higgins. Back up left guard, and now they're explaining the options to Moeller. We had an ineligible receiver downfield by the offense. Penalty is declined. Second down. It's really a tough call on Higgins because he's just doing his job. The screen is supposed to be thrown a lot earlier than that, and then he's supposed to get downfield and get somebody. That's right. He's supposed to count to 1-1,000, 2-2,000, 3 3,000, and as I said, he probably got up to 15 and had to go eventually. Yeah. So they just uh, lose the down, and it's second and 10. Ball just outside the Michigan 45, part of the sellout crowd here at Aloha Stadium, and they've seen a great ball game. It's been a pleasure for us to bring it to you on ESPN. Tipton with a nice play fake under pressure, dumps it off incomplete. His screen man, Crowell, was in front of the screen, and the ball was thrown behind. Harris was all over him, along with Thebert. And Tipton got drilled that time. Well, they brought their big their big defensive lineman, and Thiebert came outside. He had his screen runs right over the back on top of the screen, and he'll just take them right down. And Billy Harris in there again. Oh. They're just so strong up front. All that for an incompletion. He's laying on his back saying, oh, we're calling the screens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me throw to the tight end real quick and throw to the ball. And we've got a timeout on the field with 7.51 to go in the ball game. Tipton has missed five straight. And they want to talk it over. Well, they've had very few one, two, three punts. I mean, they've moved the ball every single drive. Sure a couple mistakes hurt them. They've played well against Michigan. Very well-designed offensive game plan. Michigan showing blitz again. They have six men near the line of scrimmage. Now they back out of it. Tipton throws an incomplete just off of the fingertips of Hall, his big tight end, who's had such a big game. And he tries to argue for the completion, but won't get it. Let's watch Ron Hall. That's just a simple crossing route. He'll just take, come off line of scrimmage, get behind that referee, use him as a screen. Now he'll dive. He tries to make this catch, but a good throw, and this would have been a first down. He just let him a little bit too much. Would have been shy of the first down, and with 7.45 to go and fourth and 10, there's Mester burying Tipton. Now they'll have to punt it away on fourth and seven. That's the decision that Tommy makes. Gant will go deep to receive the kick of Alo. And there is Dick Tomey. He knows his club's down by 14, and he's running out of time. I think what he wants to do, though, is let his defense try to get the turnover deep in Michigan territory. Alou tries to hang it high. Pretty floating kick. Gant lets it go. Bounces inside the 15 and goes out of bounds. Good kick. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. After a 30-yard kick, Michigan will start from there. Sham Beckler, 206 career wins. That's number one. Joe Paterno, Dooley, and Claiborne, the next three. But you've got to be a great coach, and you've got to be around a long time to rack up 206 wins. And what I've really found impressive, uh, this edition of his team is so much more offensive-oriented. So many more formations and uh, interesting Versatile. wrinkles. I really like it. Uh, I think this is one of his best teams. I think he'd agree with that. I think so, too. And I think it's the kind of offense that can come from behind, which is something he rarely had in the past. Ball up to 15. Hawaii's going to have to gamble on defense. They've got six men on the line of scrimmage right now. And Morris cuts it back on the run. Gets up to the 20-yard line. Michigan more concerned about running time off the clock now more than anything else. Brian Owens, who's had a fine game, came up to make the tackle from the secondary. And the rushing yards continue to mount for the Wolverines. Both Perriman and Morris over the 100-yard mark today. Webb is in the backfield now. Almost half that yardage, though, was on three plays. Yes, it was. Hawaii's defense outside of those plays has really been tough. I'm not trying to make Hawaii's defense uh, any better than it is because it's been outstanding all year long. Harbaugh on second and five. Morris dives forward to the 25. Should be very close to the first down. Had to get midway between the 25 and the 26. And they'll bring him down. Morris walking away and somebody still has his leg. Morris now 20 carries, 112 yards. It'll be interesting to see if uh, interesting to see if Michigan can win uh, the Rose Bowl this year, and it'd be Bo's first 12-game victory season. You know, 12 yep. victories in one year, and uh, 
you know, if, if it hadn't been such an outstanding year for the Miami Hurricanes, they could have well won the national title this they year. They sure could have. It was the Minnesota game that uh, hurt the chances of going undefeated. And, of course, then they turned around and beat our rival Ohio State. And there's the first down for Michigan. That's the biggest thing in their game plan right now. Rack up a couple of first downs and run time off the clock and keep the ball away from the Rainbows. Al Noga, number 54 on defense for Hawaii, has got to be very tired by now. He has been double and triple teamed all day. Still been a brilliant performer. And he is only a junior, first team All-American. He'll be one of the leaders for the Outland Trophy next year. Morris again. This time across the 30 to about the 31. Michigan just trying to grind it out for him. You're right, Mike, and it's so frustrating for uh, someone like Al Noga. You know, he's getting double teamed by Hammerstein and Elliott, 285 pounds, 306 pounds, and they're running away from him most of the time, and yet he keeps hitting, keeps playing off people, but it's frustrating, and he's such a good player. I really think in the pros, when they move him into linebacker, he'll be more devastating. He'll be able to cover the field much better. He's a tough kid. He probably will have to play linebacker at 6'1", 239, but he is quick. He can really run. Second and five, Michigan. Clock ticking downward, 535. And the Wolverines up by 14 points. Trying to go 11-1. Harbaugh on the option. They don't cover him, and he dives forward to the 35. It'll be about a half yard shy of the first down on this one. Let's go to Tim Brando at the sideline. Timmy? When you travel 5,000 miles, Mike, at that, sometimes you, you have to maybe make a few cutbacks. And the cheerleaders at Michigan, only two of them that are currently cheerleaders, could afford to get here. But they recruited Duncan Early, as well as this young man right here, to come over. Two past cheerleaders. Now, Duncan, in 50 and 51, cheerleading was a lot different, wasn't it? Not a whole lot. In 50 and 51, it was pretty much the same. Enthusiasm counted for everything. And if you had a voice at the end of the game, you weren't doing your job. Now, I want to show your colors here. Now, get that sleeve out. Now, look, fellas, he's legitimate. This is the third and one play, and Michigan with Perriman straight up the middle will have another first down. In 1950 and 1951, now just to show you that he has some eligibility remaining, there you see it. <laughs> you got your stars, you got your stripes, and Duncan, forever young. I cannot claim to be the oldest cheerleader because Newt Loken was on the field earlier, and he was my coach at Michigan. And he still has all the enthusiasm he did back in the 50s, so he's great, too. He's almost like Bo, right? Just about. A legend. Yes. Another a, legend. A legend in his spare time. <laughs> all right. Watch those handstands now. <laughs> 1950 and 51, and he's still at it for the Big Blue of Michigan. We're down to four minutes and 25 seconds. Michigan first and 10, just working on the clock. And Harbaugh's back to throw, wants it all. Throwing for McMurtry, and it's almost, it's caught by McMurtry. Somehow he caught the ball over Sam Moku. Moku was in great position, and he caught it. We well, certainly don't expect Michigan to put this ball up long when they've got a 14-point lead with a little over four minutes left in the game. This is just an outstanding catch. Good coverage. He's with him all the way. Sam Moku. So watch McMurtry go over the top and just take it away from him. I can't believe that ball didn't go to the ground. That's two catches he's made today. They gave him this one, and he'll take the yardage. Don't know how he ever got the football from Sam Moku who was in perfect position. And Moku was shaken up. Boy, it surprised you, it surprised me. It did not surprise Moku, but somehow they couldn't stop the completion. 46-yard gain on the play to the 15. Popo well, told us earlier, the one reason he's gonna be so great, he's six foot three, he can run like the wind. I mean, the kid's really tough, and he's only a freshman. Future All-American, Bo doesn't stick his neck out very often. in the footsteps of Anthony Carter, who is actually uh, doing great in the NFL now after doing well in the USFL, three-time All-American in Michigan. It's a heavy number to carry. He's doing it well. With Murphy turned down a baseball off of the number one draft pick of the Boston Red Sox this year, last year. Harbaugh brings him out with exactly four minutes to go. Up by 14, and Michigan has salted this one away. 
it to Wiltshire. Wiltshire gets maybe a yard, snowed under at the 14-yard line. Long Noga's been double team, triple team. This time he gets buried. Look at that. Three, Three guys. guys. Look at that. But listen to the weights. I mean, again, 289, 285, 306, and Noga's only 236. You you can believe that after the game, uh, Bo Schembeck was going to have some nice nice things to say about Al Noga and about this Hawaii defense. These guys really played their hearts out tonight. Michigan just turning on the clock, second and nine. Harbaugh keeps. Now he'll go outside to Webb. And Webb knocked out at the 10 yard line. We're down to two minutes and 55 seconds, and Harbaugh is down. That time they went after the quarterback, and Harbaugh took a shot. Well, this is the best that they played the option in the entire second half. They're going to come up and take it away from Harbaugh right there. Nice pitch. Oh. Clean hit, though. That's the way you're supposed to play football. Hit that quarterback. M.L. Johnson. And when Harbaugh stands up, he may have M.L. on the front of his jersey. Ouch. And Harbaugh's going to come out of the ball game. I think he wants to stay in the game, but uh, it would be a nice idea to get him out right now. Chris Zerbra, 6'1", 207-pound senior, will come in. Still got a Rose Bowl game to play. Rather not lose Harbaugh for that. Now talking about M.L. Johnson, the guy that laid that hit on him, he can play all over the field as a nickelback. He's one of their best coverage guys and a linebacker. Timeout on the field, 2.52 to go. We'll be back in Honolulu in a moment. They talked to Jim Harbaugh on the sideline, got him back into the ball game. And Michigan has the third and five at the Hawaii 10-yard line. Harbaugh, even after that wicked hit, will stay in there. And he rolls to throw. In trouble. Scrambling, and they got him. Lost him. He throws for the end zone. And incomplete off the fingertips of Jokish. And back there with him was Kofensis. We've been watching him all night long. Al Noga, filling your screen. He's being blocked, blocked, blocked. He's not going to stop. Now he gets away from Elliott. Bounce off his own player. Oh, boy, Harbaugh has been hit back to back as hard as you can get hit on a football field. He actually makes a nice, almost an outstanding catch by Jokic on this place. Behind him, he sticks one hand out. Big paw when you're 6'8". And then he might have caught it, but he got hammered. Gillette will go for the 27-yard field goal. And puts it through. So with 2.39 to go, Michigan adds three points and is on top 27 to 10. Now, while we have the chance, really, really can't say enough about the Hawaii team and what they have been able to do against Michigan and Bo Schembechler today. Well, both offensively and defensively, you know, they just were out, man. This is an outstanding Michigan team. Hawaii's played well all year, had their problems on offense, as you said. They didn't make mistakes offensively. They just ran into a defensive team that's overpowering. And the second half, Michigan came out, ran that wishbone, and they just didn't have the people big enough to stop it. That's right. ESPN's live coverage of the National Hockey League will continue on Tuesday, December 9th, when Gretzky the Great and Company visit Minnesota. Airtime, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. The Edmonton Oilers. Not having their uh, greatest year, but Gretzky is still uh, the best player on skates. With that seven or eight straight years, he's been MVP. That's just unbelievable. It's a lock. I mean, they send it to him at the start of the year and say, uh, you know, just have it described again. They hit him all night long. One of the great ones. This is Walsh, deep to receive. Of course, the one big, big college football game left is the Fiesta Bowl, December 2nd, Penn State and Miami National Championship, or make it January 2nd. Uh, who do you like? National Championship. I'll stick my neck way out, and I'm going to go with uh, Miami. I just think they can score on the Nittany Lions. I just think Penn State's going to have trouble putting points on the board against Miami's defense. I have to agree with you. As, as good as Penn State is and as great a coach as Joe Paterno is, uh, I think Miami has the weapon. This is Coldine Walsh. 
across the 30 to the 35-yard line. And I've heard some people around the country argue, and I think justifiably, that this Miami Hurricane team could play on Sundays this year. I like to probably play in Indianapolis. Campbell was the man in on the tackle. Joe Paterno is one of the most dangerous coaches, though. <laughs> you come up against a guy like that in a single game, anything can happen. But Miami just has so much speed, so much strength across the front line and in their secondary. I just think they're going to shut down the offense. Well, I'll be watching. I don't know about you. No question about that. 2.32 to go, and Tipton leads them out for what could be the last offensive series of his college career. 18 out of 29. 175 yards. Hasn't been able to hit anything lately, and now Tipton's going to have to run for it. Across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. And it was Schulte, the linebacker, who makes the stop, and Hawaii will be in this hurry-up offense. Congratulations to Dick Tomey for a great offensive game plan and really giving Michigan a lot to worry about today. Tipton on the roll, throws complete to Hall, his tight end across midfield. It'll be a first down. Hall's quite a player, too. They've got some great individual talent here. Well, Dick Tomey was very, very high on him, not just as a receiver. He's an excellent blocker. He runs well after he catches it, shown it all tonight. Now, I happen to be one of the big proponents of Proposition 48, but here is a school that's really hurt by it, Pat. We'll talk about that in a second. Tipton to throw deep this time, and a nice catch by Gaskell. Chris Gaskell with a good hands. Rivers, the closest man on coverage. And about the Proposition 48, they have so many players from uh, all over the world that English is not necessarily their first language, and that's a real uh, drawback to them on that Proposition 48. Well, I do think it's unfair for uh, Dick Tomey and his coaching staff because they have problems getting people from the mainland. they got kids. English isn't their first language. Like you said, how are they going to do well on that test? Not fair. Tipton from behind, and it's Mester with his second sack of the ball game. And a lot Mester of those kids, is a good one. The thing is, a lot of those kids do very well when they get to college. Even though they don't they know do. English that well, they, they excel, do. they work hard, and they uh, graduate. He's graduated over 80% of his kids. Fourth sack for Michigan. Bo yesterday was talking about his uh, his graduation rate in the last five years. He says it's around 85%, and that's the way it ought to be. Well, when I played for him in the East West Shrine game, he kept telling me that I went to the second best school in the country as far as academics go, and it didn't have any athletic program at all. I should have gone to Michigan. I tried to tell him that they never passed. Why would anybody go there if they were a receiver? <laughs> well, they never punt either. So you wouldn't have had any chance to play. 1.41 left. We've got a timeout as they're attending to Tipton. He's really had a fine last ball game. We'd like to remind you that uh, next year, if you've enjoyed college football with us on ESPN this year, we'll be doing a lot of CFA doubleheaders, afternoon and evening games. So if you enjoyed it this year, we hope you'll enjoy it twice as much a year from now. Keep sending in those letters how much you enjoy games from Hawaii, too. The beautiful setting, yes. the good games. Well, if the truth be known, we were forced to come out here against our will. And there's the Hawaii bench. Uh, been a very disappointing game for them, although they have shown the country that they can play some football out here. Tipton under pressure, throws the screen. Rowell is wrapped up by Moeller. Nice play. Also like to thank Chuck Ninus for the executive director of the College Football Association for all his help this year. He was in the booth earlier telling us uh, we definitely ought to come back here next year. Of course, Pat and I tried to argue with him, but he finally finally persuaded us. One is over to his side of the argument. Third and 19, Tipton under pressure, didn't see the blitz coming, floated it out, intended for Lopati and incomplete. And it was Heron who got him from the blind side. The defensive line puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback themselves. Then when they start sending outside linebackers, 35, unpicked up, Dieter Heron, just, I don't know how he got rid of that ball, just uh, fortunate as far as timing because he never saw him. Schulte did a nice thing. He came over and uh, helped up the quarterback and said, yeah, no, you didn't see it coming. And now it's fourth and 19, last gasp for the Rainbows. Tipton with time, now chased out of the pocket. Wants to throw, 
That claw will open at the eight-yard line. Unbelievable. But I think he was past the line of scrimmage, and the flag's going to go down. Was that a throw, though? Yeah, it was. He was past the line of scrimmage, though, I think by about three yards when he unloaded it. You see, the field's 53 yards wide. He threw it from about two yards inside one sideline to the other sideline at an angle. That had to go 60 yards on the line. And it is an illegal forward pass. Mike Teeter was putting the pressure on him. And with 55 seconds to go, that's it. Hawaii will have to cough up the football. Tough break for Tipton. He made the great throw after scrambling out of pressure, but he had crossed that line of scrimmage, and it's something that a quarterback has to be aware of. And the people here in Hawaii who have filled the stadium and bought tickets in June ought to give their uh, rainbows a nice round of applause for a great job that they've done today. Uh, seven and four coming right. in, they'll finish seven and five. Zerbrug will now come in at quarterback for Michigan for the final 55 seconds. There he is. And Hawaii did beat a Big Ten team for the first time. They knocked off Wisconsin here in the Aloha Bowl. The only similar opponent they played, and the scores were quite similar. Zerbrug brings, brings them out, leading 27 to 10. Only through seven passes in all of 1986. He'll give it on the pitch this time to Wilcher. Wilcher tripped up at the 44. Maybe one more offensive play for Michigan. They were challenged as much as they've been challenged all year and responded after leading twice and being tied. They came back on the strength of uh, Jim Harbaugh's great athletic ability. Morris rushed for 117 yards, Perriman for 107, and two touchdowns. They get quite a ball play. Wilcher trying to get outside, cuts it back, drops as he gets to the 46-yard line. The clock will stop while they move the chains, but then we'll restart as soon as it's marked ready for play. Part of the Michigan rooting section, and their next stop will be Pasadena, California. They know how to get out of, out of Ann Arbor for a couple of weeks, don't they? The clock has restarted. It's down to three. There is Dick Tomey on the sideline. He's got to be disappointed yet proud of his kids. And there is Bo Schembechler. He's got a lot to be proud about, too. 11 and 1 on the year. And he will go across the field to shake hands with his former assistant coach in Miami of Ohio. Tomey was a graduate assistant at that point. And Schembechler congratulating some of the Hawaii players. Big smile from Bo. That's what we saw all day yesterday in practice. Talking to Colin Scott, the young man from Australia right there. And Michigan now 11-1. Will go on to the Rose Bowl. This uh, has got to be, I think, the best offense that Michigan has ever had in teams that I've seen. And that's why I think they have a, a good shot at winning that game against Arizona. Uh, like you said, they don't have to come in and just grab a lead. They can come back if they do fall behind. They've proven that. They'll be playing Arizona State, excuse me. Uh, that's why I think they have a good shot at continuing their drive toward another national crown. I think, and we've seen this throughout the year with the Auburns, the Alabamas, you just can't live with the running game anymore. You've got to be able to throw the ball and be versatile on offense. Of course, he's had uh, the opportunity to change that offense because he's got Jim Harbaugh, such an excellent passer as well as a runner, a great field general. And Bo has had a nice time in Honolulu. Michigan winning at 27 to 10. And the rainbow is going toward the locker room. Let's get down to the sideline and Tim Brandt. All right, and thank you, Mike and Pat. I'm very happy. I'm sure Coach Bo Schembechler with the fourth quarter. It was a very difficult game for you, though, Coach. Well, we thought it would be. They're a good team. Um, you know, the problem is back uh, in the mainland, we never get the scores till late. We never hear anything about Hawaii. Yeah. And we, you really don't know how good they are until you look at them in film. But they're a good team, and uh, they played hard. We knew it would be hard for us to win, especially after the Iowa State game and everything. It was kind of anticlimactic. So it was uh, it was a tough team to play. You didn't get all the breaks either early. McMurtry's catch that was you uh, disallowed. That? Can you believe that official would miss that one? <laughs> I can't believe it. Now, you asked him. You said, did, did, I heard you. You said, now, did you see the play? Did you see the play? And then he both, turned away. Both the other deep officials said, I saw the same thing you saw as a completion. That's the only guy that saw an incompletion. I said, well, overrule him and none of them would do it yeah. so. I want to ask you a little bit about the play
play of Harbaugh because he's meant so much to you. And then today in the second half, the opening drive of the third quarter, he really was the key. He made the plays for you out oh, of the wishbone. He's, um, he's an excellent quarterback. He's a great quarterback. And he's done that all year. He's played very well all year. And, um, you know, some of that, um, uh, those plays that were breaking with the fullback in there, you know, that's Harbaugh. That's not just the fullback. And um, he's done a great job for us. Now it's on to the Roses. Yeah, well, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, a lot of work to do. Thanks All again, right. Coach. All right. Bo Schembechler, the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, and another successful ending to a great year out of Ann Arbor. And we'll continue with more from Honolulu in just a moment. Michigan wins it in a tough one here in Aloha Stadium. 27 to 10 over the Hawaii Rainbows. Michigan led 3-0, then 10 to 3, and then after a 10-10 tie, they stretched it out. Our Hartford player of the game, senior fullback Bob Perriman of the University of Michigan, who rushed for 107 yards, including a 55-yard burst that broke it open. And a pair of touchdowns for Perriman. Had an outstanding game and joined Jamie Morris as a 100-yard rusher in the game in Honolulu against the University of Hawaii. Our Hartford player of the game, Bob Perriman. Our congratulations to him and to Michigan for their big win today. And we want to thank everybody connected with ESPN involved with our telecast this year. It's been an absolute delight to work with these people and especially with Pat McAnally and Tim Brando. It's been great working with you guys all year. I think we got the best crew in football and it's been a lot of fun for me to be here. We want to thank everybody. Especially whoever's decision it was to send us to Honolulu for the last game. There are the names of... Uh, once again, our final score from Honolulu, Hawaii. Michigan 27, Hawaii 10. Coming up next, the Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report. ESPN's live presentation of college football will continue December 13th with the NCAA Division II Championship and the California Bowl. Coverage begins at 12.30 p.m. Eastern and on the 19th, join ESPN for live coverage of the NCAA 1AA Championship at 11 p.m. Eastern.